let's begin. It's 6.30. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Town of Camden Select Board meeting for June 6, 2023. As in the uh, procedure, we are live streaming on YouTube. That link can be found, of course, on YouTube under the Town of Camden. Also, we are, have a, a Zoom webinar link, which can be found on our agenda in our packet, which can, that can be found in the Town of Camden website under the Select Board 2023 meetings, and you'll find the packet there in the agenda and click on that. Again, uh, for those who are attending via Zoom, please uh, understand that um, uh, we uh, address and treat uh, 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 attendees uh, just as we would anybody sitting here. Please raise your hand if you want to be identified and talk, or um, otherwise, um, uh, please don't use the chat function because we're not monitoring that. With that, before we call to order the agenda, I, I wanted to briefly discuss um, our, an annual event that the town select board um, arranges every year, and specifically I'm speaking to the, um, the town report. Every year we um, uh, print a town report with reports from all of our department heads and from um, our town manager and select board and also a number of remembrances, but most importantly, we vote a month or so, or two months ago, on a dedication. We want to announce tonight that that dedication is directed at the Rotary Clubs of Camden. We want to, uh, maybe a little belatedly perhaps, but uh, thank them so much for all they've done. But with that, I would respectfully request that um, representatives here tonight from the Rotary Club, please come up here uh, and, and Rotary Clubs. Um, I believe there are uh, three. I, I don't care how many come up, it's up to you guys. Yeah, enjoy. Three clubs, many representatives. Andy, you can come up too. Sorry? <laughs> so, what? Sandy, you can come up too. Yeah, absolutely, anybody. Yeah, please. Please, um, we have representation, and perhaps you could introduce yourselves when we could start this, we all, so the public can recognize our... But can you, can you organize yourself so we can... Are we going to read the dedication? Um, if you're going to say anything, you will have to be in the should microphone. Should we wait until after should we do the dedication and then... No, you're going to do that now. That was my question. Oh. All of us? I don't need to introduce all so, of us. So, Peter, why don't you start? Good evening. Peter Lindquist. Uh, I am part of a small uh, Rotary Club called the Satellite Rotary Club, part of uh, West Bay. Um, and we're just uh, thrilled to be part of our community, uh, contributing to making it better. And uh, we do a lot of service, and so does the town. So it's, we work together. Thank this you. is Lisa Dresser. I'm Lisa Dresser. I'm the current president of the West Bay Rotary Club. and. Thank you all for this honor. This is great, and it's nice to have Rotarians serving on the Board of Selectmen as well. <laughs> and I'm Judith Tarbox. I'm the president of the Camden Rotary Club, and it's truly an honor to uh, be recognized uh, in the town report. I think that that's, like, big time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judith. Gentlemen. And I'm Mark Berglin. I'm on the Satellite Club with Peter as well. I've uh, been there for five years since the inception of it, and mm -hmm. it's great to be recognized in this level based on the amount of work I know that we've put in as a total rotary organization in this area and the support from the town for us to be able to facilitate a lot of those things. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sandy Cox. I'm the uh, um, assistant district governor for Area 10, which is Belfast, Rockland, Camden, and West Bay. And again, thank you for the recognition. We certainly appreciate it. You're welcome. With that, by the way, we'll give you a, this is the town uh, report. And by the way, it's available to the public. It's, uh, we have oodles of them in the town office, so please pick one up. Um, yeah, very informative. Uh, but with that, um, before we go any further, I wanted to have uh, Allison, if you would mind reading the, dedica the dedication that has been written, and it's for the public that's, that's uh, present in, in this document. Sure. Um, the dedication of the annual report ordinarily honors the service of an individual resident, but this year we would like to recognize the outstanding contributions of many of them through an organization whose members have collectively, over nearly a century, provided invaluable service and support to the town of Camden and our neighboring communities. We are speaking, of course, of our local Rotary Clubs, of which there are three, the Camden Rotary Club, the West Bay Rotary Club, and the Satellite of West Bay Rotary. 
United under the common motto of service above self, the clubs are divided only by their preference for the time of day to hold their meetings. With so many residents and friends of Camden who are motivated by the call to serve, it's no surprise that Camden boasts Rotary Clubs for every meal of the day. Collectively, they have raised and distributed hundreds of thousands of dollars to community organizations, scholarship programs, international exchanges, and education. Perhaps just as importantly, they have fostered community spirit, civic values, and a commitment to lifelong learning that extends far beyond the club's membership. The Camden Rotary Club began its weekly Tuesday luncheon meetings at the Camden YMCA almost 100 years ago, at a time when the town was experiencing rapid change. As the historically industrial Camden sought to establish itself as an attractive place for new residents and vacationers, many prominent residents recognized that the future of the town would depend on the civic-mindedness of its residents. On April 9, 1925, the editors of the Camden Herald proclaimed that Camden is surely going ahead these days. So far this year, it has taken on the town manager form of government, the first town in the state to do so. It has voted to spend $80,000 for its schools and will soon have a new school building too, if not better than, equal to, if not better than any other town of its size in the state. The latest step, which is a sign of progress, not only in civic affairs, but also in the business world, took place last Friday night when a Rotary Club was formed, and the town took its place in an organization that is not only national, but international. While much has changed in our town and the local Rotary Club since 1925, our community's success still depends on citizens adopting the Rotarian motto of service above self in its many forms. Rotarians describe their clubs as a global network of 1.4 million neighbors, friends, leaders, and problem solvers, solvers who see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. The then novel idea of the town manager form of government has now been adopted by most towns in the state, but volunteers continue to play an integral role in all that we do in town. The school building referred to in the editorial served for many years as our middle school and recently underwent an impressive renovation to house the Zenith Alternative, Alternative Education Program for the high school and the administrative offices for the Five Town School District. Reverend Ralph Hayden, who chaired the building committee for both this new school and the Camden Public Library, was also a Rotarian. This is but one example in a long history of Rotarians turning their commitment to service into action for the benefit of our town. The Camden Rotary Club grew steadily in its early years and took on numerous causes ranging from bicycle, bicycle safety to small loans for university students who ran out of money before completing their degree. This initiative blossomed into an extensive scholarship program which provides support for students in the Five Town School District as well as support for residents of all ages pursuing technology education. The, act, the acts of service over many years are too numerous to catalog, but it is worth mentioning a few more. Their members drive weekly for Meals on Wheels, distribute holiday food baskets for families in need, participate in the Earth Day um, spring roadside cleanups, organize events like Music by the Sea over the 4th of July, and have donated to countless organizations and initiatives ranging from affordable housing programs to the Camden Snowball. The Camden Rotary Club still meets weekly at noon on Tuesdays, just as they always have, but the location has moved to the Congregational Church. An option of attending virtually over Zoom is also available and members of the public have an open invitation to attend and listen to the weekly speakers on a variety of important topics. In 1986, Camden's second Rotary Club was born. The Camden Rotary Club had grown to over 100 and by some accounts it struggled to accommodate the needs of all its members, especially those who felt the club was a little too large and meetings a little too long. The West Bay, as reported in the Camden Herald, um, <laughs> the West Bay Rotary Club was formed with the same focus on service, but organized as a breakfast club. Over the years, they too have helped many students further their education, as well as, as, well as volunteered monthly for Habitat for Humanity, repainted the toboggan shoot countless times, and raised many thousands of dollars for local charities through annual Christmas tree sales, the Duck Derby, and e-waste collection. Another significant event came in 1987 when a Supreme Court decision ruled that Rotary International could no longer prevent women from being invited to join local clubs. Both West Bay and Camden Rotary Clubs embraced the new opportunity and membership again grew, benefiting the town with more and more community members who put themselves in the habit of thinking about things in a civic-minded way. Rotary suffers from the same difficulty as municipal government in trying to settle on a meeting time that works best for everyone. 
The newest addition to the Rotary landscape is the satellite of West Bay Rotary, which operates under the larger West Bay Club. They meet twice monthly at Flat Flatbread Pizza at 515. They participate in many of the same projects as the other two clubs, such as Habitat for Humanity, Partners for World Health, and Roadside Cleanups. The group also took on a full rehabilitation of the bath house, bathroom house at Lake Beach, among many other things. In 19, a 1925 editorial in the Camden Herald entitled, Why Rotary, has been dug up from, all, from the archives every 25 years or so and reprinted for its continued relevance. We will quote it here as well. Men who know Rotary say that the Rotary Club is a sort of storage battery of energy that sends its members forth into their business activity, their social and home life with a desire, uh, with a desire to put the high standards of Rotary service into immediate and result-getting action. Rotary has come to the rescue in community matters and so many, on so many occasions with their battery pack of volunteers and goodwill. We are grateful for the innumerable contributions that our local Rotary Clubs have made to the town of Camden in these first hundred years. Not only has the support come in the form of tangible works undertaken by your members, but also in the invaluable work of arousing the civic consciousness of the larger community. Thank you. Can I just get one picture? One, one good photo. This one when we're all standing. Take two. Yeah, thank you. Do you want to make it for us? Just Thank you. Turn it over. Right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for your, all you've done. All we do. Go ahead. So since we're in the chapter of dedications, we have another one. Oh, shit. So, um, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so Bob, this is, this is a, um, a small token of our appreciation of all the work you've done for the town for the past six years on a select board countless hours you've spent here working with us, members of the select board, present and past, working with Audra and Bill and Janice and Jeremy and Dave and everyone in the town office. And we wish you a happy retirement. Some of us are not exactly excited about this retirement, but thank you so much. Don't be a stranger, come back. And I'm sure that we will keep on calling on you for your expertise. Thank and you just right. one last piece of advice, don't drink it all on the same night. Okay, <laughs> like tonight you mean? Exactly, like, okay. but thank you very much for everything, Bob. Thank very you. welcome, it's been a real trip, I've enjoyed it. Um, there's always the good and bad and the ugly of everything you do in life, but there's been more, more good and no ugly, honestly. But um, the, the best part of it, from, from my reflection, is the people I've met. The, the people of Kimber I didn't know before this as well as I do now, and I, I, that's, that's, that's going to be with me for the, whatever days I have left. But let me check out what this is, because I may want to drink it now. <laughs> Empty your book. Your, yeah. <laughs> She's emptying her... Um... <laughs> yeah, I'm not really good at wrapping. Oh, stuff. <laughs> Great job. I'm trying to figure out unwrapping is more difficult because this tape is tight. <laughs> Sorry to take your time with this, but I'm sorry. I brought a knife. Oh my God. It's, it's a six pack of wines. Oh my God, great ones too. Of Italian wines that we know you like. You're right. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been it's been a real trip, as I said. It's been a pleasure. I'll miss all. Well, anyway, actually, I won't because I'm going to be around. You're going to be around. <laughs> but thank you very much. Paul. Okay, no more announcements, please. <laughs> thank you. Um, I want to call to order the agenda, but before I do, I want to make a couple of revisions with the board's um, permission. One is I've had a request to. 
um, I think um, gets this in order, uh, uh, remove one item from the consent agenda and put it on the agenda. That's the application for telephone pole at Ross and Ave. So I will do that. Okay. Um, the other one is uh, item five, action item 5D, which is the transfer of Lazy Jack day serial license. I would propose that we table that item because we would um, I suggest we get the input from the Harbor Committee on this rather unique situation of the transfer, hopefully is uh, of, a, of ownership and use uh, in, the, in the town. Um, and three would be um, to, I wanna move item 5E, which is the proposal for the Maguntuk Water Association Water Quality Monitoring just move it up in the agenda to the, be the first item on the action items list. So unless there are any objections, we will move into the agenda, which is first and always public comments on non-agenda items. Does anybody here would like to make a comment that something is not on the agenda? You're not doing this out of respect for me, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, thank you so much. I'm actually going to miss that part. Um, I'm come for it now. Yeah, I'll be here. Maybe I will too. <laughs> Participate now. Well, I could be more of an antagonist. Uh, but anyway, let's move on to the second item on our agenda, which is the uh, approval of the minutes from uh, May 2nd and May 16th. Um, May 2nd. Any uh, comments, changes, a, a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve. A second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? It would be 401 because I was not in attendance. Uh, and then next time would be May 16th, please. Make a motion that we approve. Second. Any discussion? All's in favor? Yeah. Tom, so it's 401 again. Thanks, Tom, for reminding me. Um, that's the end of the uh, approvals for that. And now on to public hearings, we have, um, I believe, six. We have uh, applications of six entities. And just as a, uh, information for my benefit, is anybody here that is going to, what will, in the public hearing portion of these licenses, what wants to talk to the license? I ask that because it helps me to manage the process. If there's not, I will, um, if, if anybody's forgotten, please raise your hand. But. Uh, the, because the purpose of public hearing is for the select board to solicit information from the public on the matter at hand, the license or the um, whatever, usually liquor license. Um, if you did want to say something, please uh, raise your hand and I will um, have you come up here and identify yourselves. Please speak. Um, uh, please keep it brief, uh, succinct to the point, whether you're for, against, or just want to speak to the item. When all of the public input is complete on that agenda item, I will close the public hearing portion and revert to the deliberation decision by the select board. So the first is the application of Brevetto LLC doing business as 40 paper at 40 Washington Street for renewal of a Class A restaurant liquor lounge liquor license. Now, there's nobody here, I believe, to speak to that, so I'll close the public hearing portion and revert to the select board. Second. Uh, discussion, those in favor? Five zero. And given that there's probably nobody here, I'm going to take the next five as a block and I'll read them. Application of Barron's Restaurant at Two Wayfair Drive for renewal Class A restaurant lounge liquor license. Application of Camden Deli at 37 Main Street for the renewal of a Class One restaurant liquor license. Uh, application of Captain Swift Inn at 73 Elm Street for a renewal class five bed and breakfast liquor license. Application of Salt Wharf at Three Wayfarer Drive for a renewal class A restaurant slash lounge liquor license. And lastly, application of Camden Windward House at Six High Street for a renewal class five bed and breakfast liquor license. I move that we approve all of those liquor licenses. Motion made and seconded for discussion. All those in favor, 5 0. On the consent agenda, there was two items tonight. Uh, one is the um, renewal of Hitler Lodging Establishment licenses for Camden Deli, Captain Swift Inn, Lyman Morse Crew Quarters, Norumbega Inn, Scott's Place, and Timbercliff Cottage Bed and Breakfast. The second item, taxi cab operator driver's license for Ellen Curtis. Are there any objections to those two items on the consent agenda? No. Not hearing any, they are hereby adopted. 
and that's, that's the end of the consent agenda. Now, because of my revision early on, we have an uh, insert in another. Um, uh, what? But if I may, Chris Wolf is oh, here. Oh yeah, he, is. he always I'm comes sorry. for yeah, yeah. for the license Chris, did you for want to say new anything driver. About your, so about Wolfie. So it's Ellen. That would be great. Oh sure, can we yeah, do that? absolutely can do it. I meant to do that, and I forgot. We, Thank you, Sophie. Yeah. Come on up. <laughs> don't feel bad. I don't either. Okay. Sure. Hi, I'm Ellen Curtis. Uh, Pleasure. Members of the board, um, Chris Wolf, 47 Start Road, Wolfie's Wheels. Um, another application for another driver for the taxi cab. So. Uh, Ellen Curtis, uh, she uh, teaches at the middle school. Huh. And uh, any questions you have? Elementary school, right? Middle school. Middle, middle school. school. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The middle school. Middle school. Good. Oh. Looking forward to have more. 29 years I've been there. 29 years. Oof. Yeah. Are you going to do that just for the summer or year round? No, just for the summer? Summer and maybe weekends. Summer, maybe weekends. Yeah, yeah. Great. And are your bookings picking up because of summer? Tremendously. We're deep. I, could, I could use more. We're, we just have terrible luck with drivers for some reason. Hard. I don't know why. Everybody, honey. So you'll probably see me every meeting. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You're welcome uh, to go. But I, I feel it's important the select board meets the new drivers. Oh, okay. so I, I totally agree. We Thank welcome you. and Thank good you. luck and stay with it. Thank yeah. you. I'll try. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Sophie. Um, and the new agenda item is the application for a telephone poll at Ross and Ave. Um, Audra, any intro here? That yes. So this is part of the uh, Ross and Ave Bridge project. So as part of uh, MDOT's um, any any project that they have, they need to do coordination with the utilities, which includes, um, you know, any time um, poles or lines need to be moved because of a right. project. Right. So this really is just going to make the removal of the bridge um, easier because it's it's taking a line that currently goes, I think, diagonal over the bridge and will make it um, run perpendicular to the bridge. So it'll be easier um, for the removal process and the, and the installation of the new bridge. Have we seen that bridge plan yet? We haven't because we're the ones who are doing the new bridge design. So MDOT is responsible for the removal. So we have the plans for you know what it's going to look like once it's removed and restored. And then we need to come in and do our part to install the new bridge. And our engineers working on that right now. Is this existing pole in the way of removal? I believe so. That's why MDOT is um, asking for the uh, old pole to be removed and the new one to be located in a different area. Yeah. Alice, go ahead. Um, so in, in looking at that with a couple of the neighbors, it seems like um, to a talk to DOT people or the CMP people or somebody. It seems like part of that is that it's the wire over top and they need to use cranes to remove the bridge and so it's the yeah. way the wire is. But I, my understanding was there was going to be some conversation about um, the way the tree could be pruned and how that was all going to happen. It seems like maybe there's a resolution in place and um, but is there any way to um, condition this on like approval from the town tree warden or I my understanding was the residents there that were concerned were going to be talking to maybe yeah, Doug they, Johnson and maybe Dave with, St. Laurent too. We spoke with Dave St. Laurent today who's the tree warden and um, he's he's addressed their concerns from what I understand mm. with the pruning. Did Doug Johnson go over there and I don't know if Doug went. I, I know that Dave spoke to them. That's, mm. that's the extent of it. Mm. Sophie. I did, and do we know where the new pole is going to go? Yeah, it's in the drawing. Yeah, it's well, in I the see now. the drawing, but. I don't know where that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, kind of, it's a drawing. There's, you know, it's true. It's, it's, it's true. kind of hard to understand. I mean, I see the drawing. I see it's where the new pole is going to be. The question I have is very often we hear comments of people with scooters or wheelchairs that they cannot navigate a very narrow uh, sidewalks. sidewalks. So, are we in this new design? Are we taking this into account? We don't have any sidewalk on Ross and Ave. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm. Tells you how often I go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I guess my question is moot. Okay. <laughs> well, I do have a comment. I, yeah. So, 
I did go over there today and it, it looks like there's going to be significant pruning on the opposite side of the bridge that's already um, there. So there's already one big tree on the opposite side of where I think where they want to place the tree. So um, the, I mean the pole. Oh, I was going to say, so, don't sorry. confuse me. So <laughs> the whole entire side that they want to uh -huh. um, put the line in the pole, it's going to demolish that entire tree canopy right there that goes across the entire bridge. It's going to, it, it is, it's going to take it way back. I feel like it's kind of counterintuitive to our whole tree um, initiative uh, and I have concerns about how close the pole is going to be to um, to the river and just all of the whole dynamics of the whole thing. I, I don't really feel like we have enough that was given to us or really anybody here to explain it a little bit better for me to make a informed decision on mm. whether I want to go ahead with um, saying yes is is uh, you know, Stephanie I get to, your, to your point is do we know if this is an alley pole or not is alley is alley pole is one-sided it's not this is a class 340 foot pole T right. Yeah. And it's electrical. No, no, it's a it's a single phase wire up there, but it's, oh, oh, there is. But is it's it's a significant pole, class three. Oh, four, no, four. I know. I, just, I was just wondering if the alley pole with something by the way, cancels that here to your point. But an alley pole hangs on one side of the pole only, takes it away from trees usually. But I don't know if that can apply here or not. That's something we could consider. Yeah, we just don't know that. I, I, I don't saying. know. We just don't. I just don't feel like I we don't have know. enough information to make sure that the initiatives that we're already trying to put in place around town are going to be honored by doing this by what we're being given. Mm -hmm. And I'll add to that, we, we don't have a plan here. So if, if there was a plan where we could actually see and why this, why this change needs to be made, I'd be, in, I'd be for it. I, I do work a lot with the DOT. I set polls myself. Mm -hmm. And I know that, that there's, there's more to it that could be presented if they need to move this. There's, there's more information that we could have before us. Yeah, I would suggest maybe we get a little bit more and, just, and suggest looking at, does this one pole, uh, it's only one pole being added and then it's gonna connect with something across the bridge, is that right. what's happening? Can, can well, currently we, the line goes right. diagonally oh. from one side of the bridge to the mm -hmm. other. Oh. This is moving the pole to so the, other the line side. goes perpendicular to the got bridge it. so that they right. can remove the bridge. Yeah. And I would put the new bridge in. Got it. Yeah. I would suggest they maybe take a look at an alley pool because that'll take you. Well, I mean, this isn't our. We we can't decide okay. on an alley pool. That's not our decision. <laughs> suggested, suggested that was the word I used. We're just being asked if we want to be able to move the pole, and I understand that a nuisance of being having to work around things mm -hmm. is just that a nuisance. So it makes sense that the easy solution would be, well, let's just move the pole. But I feel like we have so many other things going on in town that we're trying to promote. I'm not really sure that this does that for us. And I'm not really quite sure how much of a nuisance it is to remove the bridge, um, having the pole stay where it is. And to keep the diagonal? Yeah. I don't know. Keep, I, I, right. don't know. We just, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, we need to be specific. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Allison. So it seems like most of the time that anything that has to do with the um, street trees or maybe I don't know if this officially counts as a street tree or not, but all of that goes through this tree warden process, even significant pruning. So if if we're to I know I understand you're saying that, oh, that's all been worked out. But is would there be a way just to condition it? on approval from the tree warden? I don't think so. I don't no. think so. This, I mean, yeah. this is Bring it back. Is, is there state. that big of a hurry? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. We can. They're not going to move, remove them. it next week anyway, probably. The, no, so. no. They're, they're not. This is all just part of their Understood. process Understood. for what they need to yeah. do to get. 
I, I think just just, ex just ex ex express the concerns of the board with the issue of the tree. And I don't even know which tree we're talking about, but if it, if it, there are ways they can work around that by placement of the pole, type of pole, they know that they do it all the time. Mm -hmm. That's those poles were used over by uh, Flatbread Pizza for that, exactly that reason, uh, and, and they're proposed for Route One North if it's ever built uh, because it saves lots of trees. But anyway, let's, let's get yeah. more information, Audra. It's okay mm -hmm. with you, please. All right, with that, we'll move on to our, our list of action items, the first of which, per my revision, will be the proposal from the McGuntagrick Watershed Association for Water Quality Monitoring. Is there someone here who wants to speak yeah. to it? Oh, there he is. I knew you were there somewhere. I'm in the back. Uh, good evening, Tim Trumbauer, uh, 620 Hill uh, Road, Rockport, and I'm here with Forrest Bell, Zephy Environmental. To see everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is kind of a proposal to continue some of the uh, monitoring work that we have an organization are already doing. Uh, we're currently through Lake Stewards of Maine program monitoring uh, three stations, uh, two in McGonagall Lake and then one in Norton Pond. And then additionally, we're doing uh, bacteria monitoring for E. coli at seven different locations throughout the watershed. Um, so kind of a gap in that monitoring currently is the river. Um, so what we would like to do is start monitoring. Um, water quality levels in the river at seven specific locations uh, using these hobo onset uh, data loggers that produce uh, continuous data. Uh -huh. um, so that's task one that's before you. And then we have an additional task, which is task two, which is actually looking specifically at the water levels of uh, various impoundments uh, on the river. So McGonagall Lake, the Seabright section, and then uh, the impoundment behind Montgomery Dam. Because during the high water event that we had, uh, last month, it became apparent that there's really not a lot of historic data um, in regards to what the water levels are in reaction to any given event and uh, throughout time. So we got a lot of anecdotal stories about folks talking about, uh, you know, back, back when, you know, 20 years ago, the water level was this high after this storm, and the person across the shore said, well, we remember it was this level, and so there's a lot of disagreement. So we feel like it would be really beneficial to actually have, be generating some real data. Um, mm -hmm. And the proposal that we have is to install these uh, meters that actually uh, have solar power uh, batteries to them, and they would and come to the data plan. So it would be broadcasting the water level data in real time uh, every 30 minutes, and we'd host that or at least link to it through our website. Allison, would you um, consider monitor, or maybe you're already doing this or planning to the, monitoring rainfall in a few different locations in the watershed too, to be able to compare, you know, it'd be interesting to see, okay, we got this amount of rain in six hours or however many hours, and this was the level we saw the lake go up or down? Yeah, so we, we would definitely consider that. We could install rain gauges. That's not a part of this proposal, but it's something that we could do. Mm -hmm. um, there is the, uh, NOAA has a precipitation center where they have measurements in Rockport, and they kind of do some verification uh, with, uh, I forget the technical terminology, but they have, I think, a weather station. They also look at radar, and they can kind of come up with a, a resolution of where rainfall has fallen in a 24-hour period. So that's another thing. Actually, I, I use that to do some calculations and get some information during the rain event that we had um, last month. So that could be another source mm -hmm. that's publicly available and exists yep. um, that can kind of give us an approximation of that without having to install extra equipment. Yeah. And if I just want to add something really quick. Sure. For yeah, us. I just wanted to add quickly for the select board's benefit. Um, you know, this is sort of a natural continuation uh, progression of the work you funded FB Environmental to start uh, last year. I think it was July of, of 2022. So just wanted to make the connection. And we were really excited when Tim was hired with a water quality background. And so this will really help with the long term sustainability of doing this monitoring which is, has limited value for a year or two, but has tremendous value if it's carried out long term. So you can really see the, tra the trends of the river and the lake um, through drought periods, wet periods, things of that sort. So that's what this type of monitoring will do. And, and we will be reusing the data loggers that we invested in last year, correct? We're not buying any new equipment or a little bit for, well, for task one, which is the looking at specifically dissolved oxygen temperature and conductivity, yeah. we would be reusing those, proposing to reuse the yeah. data loggers that you have. Mm -hmm. For the water quality, uh, the water level monitoring, uh, that would actually be purchasing three new water level monitors and the solar battery packs to go along with it. Um, but that would be a one-time cost, and then we would kind of maintain them you know, for as long as they, they exist. 
uh, and make that data available. And then you can come and educate us about dissolved oxygen levels in the river and what it means in terms of health of the river and why we're so interested in measuring that, those data points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, we, we should be doing the oxygen levels, so they should be the ones telling us, right? He's just doing the pollutants. Well, so we would be well, looking at, at temperature, dissolved oxygen, um, and conductivity. So those, that's kind of a, a very basic um, environmental monitoring suite. Right. Um, and that's kind of a... That that's what FB Environmental is doing right now with the equipment that we purchased last, last year. Fall. Right. They were. So, so yeah, I, I can clarify that. Yeah, so we started the work last summer, um, and there, this, this proposal is for the Watershed Association to continue this work. Okay. So, instead, instead of us. So my... My other question then is, um, so th um, I, I'm trying to put it in, in order here. So last fall, we put $54,000 into the labor um, and equipment to monitor the oxygen level. So now you're saying that you want to put that over to the Watershed Association. Yeah, um, I think I can clarify. So the proposal that you funded last year was to purchase the equipment, which is done, so that they would be using the same equipment right. um, that was purchased by the town. Mm -hmm. um, it was develop, to develop, uh, to start the monitoring, which we did last year, but it was just for last year. It wasn't, you know, to be continued into 2023. And uh, a big part of that project was to develop a quality assurance project plan for the, for the state of Maine in order to have um, all the data be validated once it's collected. So that was a big piece of that project and that is done and the state of Maine has signed off on that project. So the data collected by the association, if it's approved, will fall under that quality <laughs> assurance project plan. Does that answer your question? A little bit because the the push last year was to have a full year worth of logs mm -hmm. so now you're just telling me that it was just for because we didn't even start doing the logs till september so thirty nine thousand dollars worth of labor was three months worth of work that fb environmental did for a the lot water. of so we did a full year which included installing all the loggers which was a big chunk of that labor um, I don't have the breakout in my head, but I can tell you that a lot of the labor in that contract was developing the quality assurance project plan. Um, that is, a, it's a big undertaking. It's a huge document. It has to follow very specific protocol. So, I mean, it's certainly information we could provide if needed, but that's, that's where a lot of it went. Okay. So then after, um, after all of that, now we're going to do um, the request is to do um, just $8,200 for the rest of this year to do the same type of water quality that cost us 34000 for three months last year. So are you, how are you getting paid for your time to do this? Me personally? Yeah. So in this request is broken out um, by item. So I have about 100 hours of my time is built into this proposal. Um, so, you know, there, there are a lot of efficiencies. Having the QWOP, the Quality Assurance Project Plan completed, I would never have the time to do that myself. So now that that's done, that's kind of a big, you know, a big chunk of the work out of the way. So um, I can just come in and basically operate off of that QWOP and go out, set the, set the loggers out, get trained. Um, you know, I've done similar work. I haven't used the specific equipment yet, um, but I've done very similar work in the past. So I'm, you know, perfectly mm -hmm. comfortable with my competence to do it, um, and then basically go out and start collecting the data and operating that plan. So it's a lot more efficient now that everything's been set up. And when, when I spoke to the select board last year, I made it clear that there would need to be a good long-term solution to provide value mm -hmm. to the town of mm -hmm. Camden in future years. So this is that natural progression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just kind of confused that we haven't had an update if it was such if it was that big of a of mm -hmm. a step to get to this point we haven't heard anything haven't had any updates so that's why I'm just asking trying to get clarification because 
there we have I don't mm -hmm. even know where I would go to get sure the information sure. We, for the water quality we provided a, an update at the end of last season to the citizens advisory committee that video is online with all the details and the data that was that was collected um, the quality assurance project plan was just signed I think by two weeks ago or so so that's a very new document and that's that's available you can mm -hmm. see what's in there and there's a lot there Allison do you have a question so, yes let me just um, mm -hmm. it always seemed it was it seemed as though it was going to be unsustainable the cost of it was if FB were going to set it all up for us and do that whole thing but then if you looked at the price tag before that was discussed to to have them continue to do everything it was going to be a lot more expensive and so the idea I would assume is the watershed association for all these years has been doing this water quality monitoring but they haven't had um, in the past the equipment to do some of the higher level stuff that I, I know at least certain directors of that organization have been interested in. So to me, it seems like we're fortunate here that the Watershed Association just hired somebody that has the expertise to do this, mm -hmm. and they're willing to take it on as their project. It's not, we would be signing a contract with, uh, or an agreement with the Watershed Association, not with you personally, right, Tim, or with. Correct. So yeah. it's, it's the organization Correct. taking it on, Correct. and then sort of, is this, did you guys discuss this with your, the board yep. there at all? So there's, the idea is that it, it's going to be a continued monitoring program. Is that? As long as funding allows, yeah, we feel this is directly in line with our mission, um, and, which I included in the proposal. Um, and we really want to use scientific monitoring as the kind of the basis of, of our work. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's really important. So yeah, we are, um, again, to the extent that we have the resources to do this, we're committed to collecting this data um, as long as we possibly can and we would like it to be kind of a, a an annual plan where we're, we're collecting this data Producing an annual report uh, in previous organizations. I've done a report card water quality report card that kind of becomes a really good uh -huh. communication uh, Tool to communicate to folks uh, You know the health of the watershed. Um, so I just think that would be a, a really valuable um, Thing for the community and, and really a, a something that's very well aligned with the mission of the McGonagall Watershed Association yeah. We have this very long relationship with contracting with the Watershed Association to do everything from mm -hmm. you know having a, a lake uh, warden to you know, all kinds of different things so to me I feel much better I feel really good about any kind of proposal that's going forward with the you know endorsement and support of the board there and the members and having more people involved other comments Thank you. Uh, Tim, I want to ask about uh, continuing costs. Um, so I, I see that you, you know, are, have a well outlined budget here. Um, and some of this is collection. So this covers us for 2023? Yes, for through the end of the season. Okay, through the end of, of the year. Yeah. November, Calendar. December, whenever yeah. you can not stand the water temperature any longer. Um, and the, the, um, the durability of the equipment, any projections on that? Uh, when so I think it's it's warranty then it's fairly durable uh, you I think you've got more experience with it uh, I do I mean things happen right that's in a watershed it's out in nature um, part of what I would be doing would be maintaining it so that would maintain the life of it um, it's it's foreseeable that something might happen to one of the pieces of the equipment but we're expecting it to be in service for several years five to five to ten years is what we've looked at for these type of hobo data loggers that we've worked with they're high sure. quality and if if something were to happen to one of them is that something where you come back to the town and ask us to replace it or and then and then anticipating 2024 costs because what i heard you say forrest was we need to carry on with data ideally yes so um yeah i think i would ask multiple sources to help fund that if the town would be willing to do that if we did have an issue that would be great okay also last question um we share the McGuntacook watershed with a few other communities. Has anything been approached to those communities? Uh, no, but I certainly would, especially in Lincolnville and Norton mm -hmm. Pond. I think that the mm -hmm. um, the evidence 
anecdotal evidence that we received regarding the last high water event was that the, the level may have been higher in Norton Pond. And certainly when I went there to the Narrows and the Bailey Bridge there, you could see that the water was actively flowing through there. Uh, so I do think that's a pinch point, and it would be great to have a data point in Norton Pond as well. Um, I have not been to one of their Lakes and Ponds Committee meetings yet because it hasn't worked out with my schedule, um, but I will be going as soon as I'm available, and I'd love to talk to them about that as well. Okay, and Hope does share some frontage on the watershed as well. Yeah, I think the, the, th the thinking with, uh, with the water levels, though, is because that's the lake. If we have one in the lake, that's kind of a bare minimum, and, and that would cover the lake. There might be some, some wind shifts and things like that that might have a very minute impact on water levels in the lake, but pretty much McGonagook Lake is going to be you know, one water level logger there is going to give us a pretty accurate reading for that entire area, mm -hmm. including the Hope Shorefront and the Hope area. Sure. Good. Any other questions? Go ahead, Stephanie. I do. So um, as far as, so before I was just talking about the water quality, trying to understand that whole process to get us to where we're at. Now I'm going to the level monitoring. The um, discussion in the last meeting was that we needed to look at the policy and um, we had discussed that the conversation would be had to bring back the dam advisory committee as it states in the policy they are supposed to be um, have a voice where is that conversation at this point since we're at a at this level well i would say i guess first of all that you know Good data drives good policy, so I think that these two things are, are related. So I think it's great. You know, this would help inform any policies that were made. Um, and you know, where that where that discussion lies now is, I think, kind of with with you all and what you want to do. The, the organization um, speaking on behalf of our board is we're we're willing to participate. Uh, we would like to get input from the community and, and still recommend that there's a, a really good kind of diverse set of stakeholders that have input into that process um, from Lincolnville and Hope and um, commercial interests and all the folks that use the watershed. I mean, it's a, there are a lot of different people and a lot of different um, you know, in, potential impacts and, and things like that that we'd want to consider all of those uh, and make recommendations to, to update that policy. But I think that this proposal would help with that because you'd actually have the data, producing data to help inform you know, the management operation of the dams. Right. I was actually hoping that you were going to say that the dam management um, person had helped you um, formulate this. to form this <laughs> and that there would be more information about the policy because, yes, we do need a level monitoring, but we also have a policy that is very outdated, and that's where the start of this conversation and why I wanted to bring you in, bring Audra into this situation, Dave St. Laurent as the dam, the dam management is, that's where this conversation started, is we have a level problem right now, and our policy is completely outdated. It's, it's I mean, mm -hmm. you have to pick and choose which part of it you're going to follow because it's that outdated. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to, the dam manager is supposed to consult with the dam advisory committee that was disbanded or not functioning right now since COVID. Right. So it's been multiple years. And mm -hmm. so now to have this placed in front of us, I was really hoping that the conversation that you're bringing to us stemmed from that healthy conversation from our management team but it sounds like the watershed is the one stepping up saying we want to help you mm -hmm. well I, which is I, great but that doesn't leave us any further right now looking at the water level saying what are we going to do because right. the policy is completely outdated right. I think we want to get back to the core issue here, which is basically the, the monitoring. That's what we're talking about here. And they can have, well, I agree with all, everything you said, Stephanie, but right now uh, the, the, I've heard comments from everybody and, and it's time to make a decision on whether we want this proposal to be accepted or not. So uh, what- Can I just say one thing yeah, about the, the email yeah. list that I don't, I think anybody, can anybody be on the McGonagall Quarsha Association email distribution list or do you have to be a member? Uh, I, I think anyone can be on the email list. We do have separate, you know, certain communications that just go to members, but anyone can sign up. I, th I think I was in a meeting the other day and somebody said, oh, I'm on the list and I'm not a, I'm not a member, but they send out really good stuff. Um, and one of the things that came out recently 
was, um, and it was, it was great because I, I got the information from the Watershed Association, not from the, the town, which is fine. Obviously, there had been some communication in the background, but the, they are now monitoring the, um, or recording and reporting the levels on, sometimes it's daily, sometimes not daily, but for all four town-owned dams, it goes on this, um, on this site, and then Tim linked to it in the, in the newsletter that went out to all the members. So, I mean, I saw that as a great example of like, mm -hmm. oh, great, mm -hmm. the Watershed Association has better communication skills than the town, and um, right. I mean, yeah. Okay. Okay. But, I mean, I think it's a starting point. I mean, once we, as you say, good data helps build good policy. Oh, so I think it's great that we absolutely. start by measuring those levels and have real, real data because right now, as you said, every, it's everybody's guesses. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think personally, I think we should approve this. Well, let's, uh, let's somebody make a motion. I'm making a motion that we approve the Watershed Association proposal uh, to monitor the, the water quality of the watershed and to uh, start monitoring the level of the watershed levels um, and that we approve a budget of $8,200, is that correct? Mm -hmm. 18, 18. Mm -hmm. Before we move forward, uh, well, I, have, I have a motion on the table, so I, 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 do I get a second on this motion? Second. Okay, motion made a second. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you. I would just like to say I'm going to support this, but for 2024, I would like to see the other communities and other stakeholders brought mm -hmm. into this discussion. Mm -hmm. Other discussion? Yeah, I actually was, I was wondering, since um, this started with um, the very beginning of the whole water, started with the FB environmental and the dam. I know I'm taking a long time. I'm sorry. Sorry. But... Um, could this be funded this year or until the river study is done by the grant funding? No. The water quality couldn't be no. put into that this time, but at the beginning of the project it could? It can count as a match, um, which isn't actually really needed at this point. We but the, for, for the purposes of the grant, they don't require um, rigorous water quality monitoring um, there. Yeah, so basically it's just the, the, the scope of the grant and what's going to be, where the money is going to be used has been established. Um, but this is something above and beyond that's really a response, I think, to what the community is asking for, which is better data, more information, um, and this is the response to that. So it's not something the that would first, be needed. The first project wasn't funded by the grant. It was a match. Right. That's what I thought. It, it counts for the match. Where will this funding come from? It's not this big matter, but where will we take what budget we're taking? Professional out? services. Thank you. Budget. Thank you. General fund. And the and, DM reserve? No. Um, why, well, I mean, I think it could. Mm -hmm. it, it could. It could. But you don't think it should. It's not that much money to really debate it, to tell you the truth. Um, but but it's we a, should vote on a funding source also. Yep, not. we should. Alderweiss proposing professional services. Yep. I just find that the professional services budget often seems like they're, it's finite and it's needed for things like at the Snowball and... What do you recommend? I... I, this is not a hill I am going to die on, first of all. <laughs> um, but I, I would just think it's, it's, it's a damn thing. I like, I like funding, but I guess it's a water, maybe, it's a water quality, it's water monitoring problem. thing, too. So maybe um, for this fiscal year, we could propose... Select board contingency? We could, yeah, well... We, know we could propose a perfectly good use of select board contingency, contingency. which you have plenty of. I agree. I mean, it really is. We, it's, a, it's a need that has been brought to our attention that we're responding to, that we're deciding what to do with. I agree with you. So I'm modifying my, my motion that we approve the proposal from the Watershed Association uh, to do those two tasks, the water quality monitoring <laughs> and the water level monitoring, and that we fund the $18,200 from the select board contingency. Do you agree with that, second? I, I do, because theoretically our professional services budget is is developed because of things okay. that we're planning on spending okay. on. We have a motion, <laughs> a motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? 4-1. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. Tim, Thanks. Thank you, Forrest. Safe drive, Forrest. I do just want to state as a fact that 
This conversation started because we were discussing that the policy that we currently have on the books for water. You're talking about the ordinance? Nope, the policy for maintaining the dam oh. at oh, I, okay, the lake okay, okay. is severely outdated. Mm -hmm. That's why we wanted to partner have more heavily with the watershed and to bring mm -hmm. the conversation was mm -hmm. the dam advisory committee. So mm -hmm. I don't want that to f die because mm -hmm. we're still. So I was going to do level. this part of my management update, but Tim and I had a meeting where we discussed both things. And this is one of the things that came out of that meeting. But the other sort of parallel track to this is that, you know, he's working in the background to across the watershed, because that's not something that I can right. as easily do as him. He's got an organization that is set up just for that purpose to come up with, you know, recommendations and, and try to get a group together to do that, that we'll participate in as well. You know, we also need to figure out what do we want to do with the dam advisory committee, because that was also set up yep. and structured at a different yep. time where it had a different sort of function than what I think that would be useful for it today. So okay. those are two different okay. things that we need to talk about in the future. And I was going to bring that up as part of my management report, and but I, I think it's important. Okay, to, thank to you. Just well, let's, let's uh, that now. The Lincolnville Select Board and during that meeting discussed the need for that to evolve. Can we have just one conversation at a time, Stu? I, I can hear you from here. It's very hard for me to focus on one conversation when I have background noise in my ears. So, all right, let's to speak with team, but if, we, if you can give us the space to have our conversation, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. It's just we did meet with the Lincolnville Select Boards, and we did talk about this. And one of the things discussed was that most of the people that had been involved at the time where we came up with the Dam Advisory Committee and all of that, they weren't, like, none of us that were in the room now were there then when that system right. was imagined. Right. And that the system of that specific committee needed to evolve as well. So that that was part of the discussion with that board. So it's right. it we I mean we had a joint yes, I can't remember just here closing it down is not the we're, way to handle we're, we're not, we're not, not. this we're is more a committees than ever. Uh, this is a subject of a future of a future uh, <laughs> agenda item please. Uh, I don't see anything that uh, we just approved that's going to change to Stephanie. I think that's going to continue and I agree with you. So well, we, I think it's a starting point. Yeah, so I, let's yeah. we have to move on. We got a bunch of agenda stuff yet to go. So Let's move on to the, uh, on the next item, which was originally the first uh, on the action list, which is the uh, proposed amendment of Harbor Dogs license agreement with respect to, I believe it's a beer and wine sales um, uh, insert. Audra, do you want to give us a little background here? Though? Yes, so uh, as you all know, because uh, you were all involved in approving the Harbor Dogs license agreement, um, the, the most recent agreement. Mm -hmm. Uh, they have requested to be able to um, sell retail um, beer and wine. So that is the exact same license that like a convenience store would have or French and Braun has. Um, I'm trying to think of the other business here that uh, uh, Walgreens has. So it's that same license which does not require approval from the select board. So you're all aware that you don't get retail liquor licenses. As far as the license goes. The liquor license, liquor license. That only. makes sense. So it's closed containers like you would buy at a convenience store. That's what Jason will get a is is proposing to get a liquor license to allow him to do. And what he needs your permission from is to amend his license agreement to be on the public landing, running his business there. That would also enable him to sell alcohol. Okay. With a retail license. See. So no one could consume it publicly because that's illegal and there's no licensed area that anyone could consume there. Mm -hmm. So that would be not part of, it wouldn't be for consumption on the landing mm -hmm. or in any other public place in town. Mm -hmm. So he's selling six packs and wine. Yes. Something like but that. But that's what he would be proposing Something to like do. that, yeah. Comments. Jason's here if you have any questions from him. Please. And okay. also, I just want to make the point, he is in compliance with his current license. He's... I understand. Yes. I hope everybody else has been through my question. Please, introduce yourself. I'm 
I'm Jason Doppelt. I'm the owner operator of Harbor Dogs, and I'm just trying to get a retail license to focus on the sales to the day sailors and stuff like that to facilitate uh, catering some meals and stuff for them. Uh, like, you know, people want to get uh, champagne, lobster rolls, you know, do mimosas in the morning, stuff like that. I sell them the small bottles of champagne. They take it on the boat ride with them um, or to a lobster bake or whatever and, you know, enjoy their beverage there or at home. You know, I'm not trying to facilitate anything down in the harbor because it's not what I want and I don't think that's what the town wants. I'm just trying to help uh, the boaters out, really. Question is bored. Nobody. <sighs> Is it too confusing for us? No, it's not too confusing. <laughs> it's, um, it's, you know, I'm struggling with this one because I, I like to be able to say yes to things um, and be supportive. Um, I'm concerned about, it, it, does, it does feel to me like it will be um, confusing to people that when you're, when you're buying something at Harbor Dogs, you're, it's so much all of it is meant to be consumed right there. People are getting stuff and they're eating it right there. And to be buying alcohol right there, I understand that it would still be, you know, it's illegal for them to um, consume it there. I, I wouldn't want you to sell cigarettes there, for instance, um, because I, I just, you know, I, I think it would add idea. to it. Um, I... It's a special thing, like it's sort of a really special privilege, I think, that Harbor Dogs has being in that location. And it's difficult to figure out what the guidelines should be for the use of public space there. And we've gotten lots of proposals. And um, so I, I guess it's not that I would never say yes to it, but that at this point I would be uncomfortable expanding the sales to that area of items without having a better vision for all the different types of businesses that we want to let or not let into the harbor. Um, but Sylvie? So we don't have a say on the retail license. No. So once the retail license is approved, we can either remove his entire license, right? So what's the option? I'm trying to figure out, you approve the retail license, no. 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 The, Who the, approves the, the agreement? The state. The state. Right. Okay, so the state grants you a retail license, and you come to us and say, I have my retail license. I need to modify this, this agreement with the town. Mm -hmm. So, what are we doing at that point? We're telling you, we're telling Jason, well, good for you, retail license, but we're not going to modify the agreement? Uh, yeah, That's that, the option we're having? Well, that, is an, that is an option for sure. When that is I an can walk up sure. to Walgreens, get my beer, come down, down to the landing, get my hot dog, and, and sit on a bench and drink my beer there. I know, but I don't buy hot I, dogs for immediate consumption at Walgreens. You can, no, to, no, you can go to French and, to, um, and buy um, sandwiches. Exactly. I'd like to bring Randy on. Have more chips. I need to think about this more. I yeah, I think. I'm going to bring Randy on. <laughs> you know. Um, I, 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 to the point here. You, you can just, go to a gas station and buy a sandwich and jump into your car and drive away with alcohol. It's true. That's true. That's true. I think preventing you from from selling those items is not going to prevent yeah, people you, from drinking you, you, a yeah, beer it's, or. A, it's a similar situation to kind of the um, uh, the gas station the Mar maritime, but anyhow, you had a question, Tom. So, I see a difference here. Uh, Walgreens owns or rents, you know, something from a private entity, um, and that private entity presumably can set some restrictions on who or what they'd like to rent that space for, and the town can as well. Um, so in that in this manner, I just don't think it's a good precedent. I agree with Allison. It is a privilege that's a to, to be there um, I, I like the idea of having that there. I, like, I think you do a great job running that establishment But um, I'm not in favor of alcohol sales there if people do want to buy alcohol They can go to French and Brown or wherever else um, that area down there is the public landing and um, I see it as um, something that we have the right and the duty to you know promote things there that we see fit to promote. I think uh, the, the public landing is there for the public to enjoy, and uh, I'm just trying to facilitate their ability to get on their boats and do what they want or get into their car and do what they want with 
their rights. <laughs> and, you know, not just trying to make a little bit of money and... Yeah, uh, just because with the way things are going right now, I'm going to call Randy in a minute. Yeah. Everything is going down, and it's just like you have to figure out how to innovate and come up with new revenue streams when you have such a small footprint to deal with. Right. And this was a option that I had that would be a high revenue for a small footprint. Right. Um, that would just help me be able to continue my operations of my business and to afford the staff that I need and to pay them the wage that they have to have to live in this lovely community that we have because rents have gotten so high that I have to either raise my prices or come up with other revenue streams to keep people here. Audrey, this agreement is approved annually, correct? Uh, five years. Every five years. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to ask Randy if he didn't want to make any comments and have him yeah, sure. sure. Randy, do you? Yeah, he's reading. He's took himself off of mute. Yeah, Bob, I think this is more of a policy decision for yeah. the board to make and vote their conscience on it. Yep. Uh, you know, we the state is going to allow uh, cocktails to go from uh, licensed establishments as well. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of changes that are happening out there. That is true. Uh, we don't have signs posted, state of Maine's uh, crime to drink in public. If you're within 200 feet of a posted sign, or if you've been told by a law enforcement officer that uh, you've been seen with an open container in public, we usually get voluntarily uh, voluntary compliance uh, when we approach people. There are uh, visitors that come here from out of state where it is legal to uh, in a public place to have it. So we always go with the education first. Uh, prior to doing any enforcement. So I would yield back to the board voting the conscience on this. That's how they feel best that this should be taken care of. Thanks, Randy. Your first, what was your first comment about um, changing regulations? I didn't quite get that uh, part. Well, the state is now uh, continuing with the uh, cocktails to go from licensed establishments. So the Peter, governor put into place. Peter Ott's fresh. Stuff like that. They can see dogs. They can all. So somebody, so somebody can and can walk into Fresh and order a cocktail and walk out. Yes. As long as they ordered food, also. I. Well, it's the same. Right. They have to be. The cocktails have to be packaged in a sealed container. But that's not what you're asking to do. No, I'm sealed containers. Yes. So that's where I feel. I mean, I'm a, I'm not quite informed enough to. Mm. It's so, possible that I'm getting this wrong because I don't understand it well enough. But so if you're getting food to go from a restaurant, you can get cocktails to go, mm -hmm. and they will be pre-portioned and packaged in a sealed container mm -hmm. that you can take out of the restaurant and consume where you like. But that's uh, not what you're asking to do. You're asking to operate as a retail. Retailer. So it's, more the, a way that French and Braun or Stop and Go or. Since they're both closed containers, it's kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. So but somebody would be able to come, though, and just buy alcohol from you, for instance, whereas yes. at Peter Ott's, you have to be ordering food and you have I to go through. I don't through. know the exact laws of that. I would have to double check that and give you, to give you a 100% answer on that because I haven't been pursuing that option. Um, the option I've been pursuing is retail sales. So when it comes to adult use sales, uh, recreational sales and stuff, I do not know the exact laws on but those. But you would be selling wine and beer? Wine and beer is what I'm shooting for, yeah. Right, so no hard liquor. Um, if that's what the town wants, then no hard so liquor. Cocktails tend to have a higher oh, God, yeah. liquor yeah. content yeah. with License sugar. Bartenders, yeah. so I'm oh, aware. No, um, of course, of course. <laughs> I had a hand in the back of the room. Did you want to say something? You have to go. You have to go up. Come please, here. Please. Otherwise, people can't hear you if you don't. No, you have to come here. I'm. am I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Good exercise. Yeah, you can go to 16 Bayview. You can get drinks there. You can bring them down to the harbor on the boat. You can do. Bring them to the select board. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Please. As long as they're not being consumed in public, and they're abiding by the state laws. Yes. But, but I, uh, I'd also like to mention. Uh, since we uh, just had the donut festival in Rockport, yes, that event was visited by four state liquor inspectors uh, because there was a catering permit. And liquor enforcement, who had gone away from the law enforcement part, has now uh, brought on some inspectors. So we're going to start seeing a lot more activity with our liquor inspectors for our licensed premises. They deal with administrative violations. So I have a feeling from the uh, 
the agents that I spoke with the other night and them telling me that there will be additional agents uh, also be coming into the field, that all of these places are going to start seeing more of the liquor enforcement uh, administrative people on a regular basis. So uh, anybody getting that license should be uh, well prepared that uh, they take those matters seriously and they will be, uh, they'll be around. Okay, thank you, Randy. Thank you very much. Hi. Uh, I work for one of the day sailors. This is my third year that I've Aim. worked for them. My name's Jessica Wheeler. Um, worked with him, or not worked with him, but seen him every day for during the summer. He does a great job. I think what he's proposing is a fantastic idea. I have people, customers, who ask, like, where can I get drinks? They're about to get on the, on the boat, and it would be great if I can say, you know what, you can grab a six-pack beer, you can grab one beer, some wine, right from him and take it down the boat. It's true, you can go to any bar. You can go right to Blaze, you don't have to order food, you can go to the bar and ask for a drink to go. I would rather send them to Jason and get his beer there. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Rather give money to Jason than to okay. Walgreens. Personally. <laughs> That's just it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one more hand. I saw Stuart. Now I can hear Stuart. <laughs> I apologize for talking. It's there. really hard for me. You have to also to remember that the, although I'm, I'm a good English speaker, it's not my native language. And so I make an extra effort to listen to all of you. So that's why I, I always pick on people who Oops. speak at the same time. Sure. Uh, my name is Stuart Smith. Um, I'm very much against modifying this lease uh, to allow uh, liquor to be sold or alcoholic drinks to be sold there. Um, we have tenants already that we lease to year round and they pay a lot more rent than what's being paid for this spot, which is a prime spot. This, the, if you look at the history of this, this facility was a hot dog stand that sold mm. hot dogs, cheeseburgers, and mm. che grilled cheese sandwiches, and once in a while they sold crab rolls. It has changed dramatically over the years. It's become a full-on uh, menu, um, competing with all the rest, rest, restaurants that are down there um, to allow, to allow the alcohol uh, sales changes it to a real restaurant. So if people need to have a drink to go out on the boats, they walk 100 yards up the street like they've been doing forever, and they buy their alcohol to go at French and Braun. Mm -hmm. So that's not a need that we have down there. So the other thing that bothers me is if you've been down there lately, there is a trailer parked behind his hot dog stand. Mm. It's twice the size of the hot dog stand. He has outside coolers on both sides because he doesn't have enough storage. So Audra has given him two weeks to move the trailer out and get the smaller storage back in there. His comment was, I don't have enough room for storage. So if he doesn't have enough room for storage already, where is he going to store six packs of beer, cases of beer, bottles of wine? So that's not what this license was about originally. And I hope the next time it comes up for renewal in five years, it will be put out to bid for anybody to bid on this. Mm -hmm. And I think that should be a public policy. Mm -hmm. There's no reason that someone should have a corner on the market down there. Right. So I'm very much against it. My tenants are all against it. And my hotel people do not like seeing this big blue trailer down there. And I hope it's going to be gone like you said it was. Thank you. Please. I mean, well, I think so well, I guess I would I, say I he is he not in not compliance. With the other, he is not in he compliance. Is, he is in compliance with his license agreement. This is not about that. Okay. This is about whether you want to modify it for the sale of alcohol or not. So he's not in violation. He's not he, in compliance with his license. He is not in violation of his, license, his license agreement. He is in compliance with so it. So it, it, there's no, uh, uh, Jeremy's, Jeremy's there is wave, waving no also. He's agreed to move that trailer to be a good neighbor to everyone, but he has no no requirement that he needs to. Is there, is, is there any established footprint limit for Harbor Dogs? No, there's not. So he yeah. can just keep getting bigger and bigger without any change. One second, one second. Jeremy, go, Je Jeremy, go ahead. No, he can't just keep getting bigger and bigger. If you go back to the agreement, this is an agreement that's been in place for a long, 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 long time. And that agreement hasn't changed. The agreement never included a footprint 
or an area delineated. It was it was based on what the uh, town manager, as I recall, the town manager, select board authorized the town manager to work out the agreement. And so we're not going to let him just creep and creep and creep. If you go down there today, Stuart, when 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 Jason bought this building, and I, I'm sure you've been down there, when he bought this business, the business, the footprint actually is come out maybe six inches from where um, it was when he purchased it. And that was just a few years ago, right? And he's gone a little, six inches into the into the lot a little bit, six inches um, in that whole facility. We're working with him on the trailer. He is in, he is in compliance with this agreement and he's committed and we're committed to, to kind of delineating moving forward the meets and bounds so Jason knows what his, his responsibilities are. And we're gonna get there. Um, but we're not, he is not in violation of any agreement that the TV has with the town. We have looked at it. He's well within town property. I know there's been talk that he's on, on your property. He's well within town property. Um, and we've looked at that on the surveys. We, we have that information available. We're working with him. And again, this is just straight up just to allow retail with like six packs and bottles of wine. I will say the, con the discussion about mixed drinks to go that Randy brought up is very different, right? Those are from licensed establishments that offer, that are bars in essence, right? This is not a bar. This is a, in essence, a small little retail operation. The, um, the mixed drinks to go, those, all those establishments come to the select board annually because they need an annual license from the state for a liquor license. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a different liquor license than Jason is asking for here. Um, so those establishments, again, like Long Rain or, well, they don't do booze, um, but Fresh or, or one of your facilities, um, Stuart, I mean, people could get drinks to go if that's what your, you know, the restaurants wanted to do. And that the town doesn't have any say in that or not, because that's a right that they get under their license agreement with this, their licenses with the state. That's not something that the select board gets into. Um, so there is no possibility that Jason can offer, um, mixed drinks to go. Um, I think what Jason was trying to say was that the, 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 the same comparison is, is that they're sealed. Um, but Jason's are sealed actually in the factory, um, yeah. right? They're, they're screw tops or a cork or a, a can opener or, or, you know, or a bottle opener. Um, so, so it is very different. Um, and I just, I know there's been a lot of information sent to the select board. Uh, I just wanted to comment that it is, He's in compliance. Um, you can't drink open container anywhere. We know that. Everyone knows that for the most part. And I think Randy's folks are going to do a probably better job, or at least look down there in the state. I heard about the issue down at uh, in Rockport this weekend, um, and that was a licensed facility from Camden, actually. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, and they have a license, a catering license, and a liquor license that they can use off their premises. This is nothing like that. Right. I'm just moving that out. I wanted to make some clarification because I know there's a lot of emails that went around to, to the select board. Yeah, just people so Mike, there was violations issued at the uh, donut festival by that, to that entity because of a violation of their liquor license. I, I don't really know about that at all. My point here is we have people paying a very good rent, a lot more rent than it's being paid by the hot dog stand mm -hmm. for selling products so they can pay their rent, they can pay the real estate taxes. I don't think it's fair to French and Braun to open up something at the waterfront on town-owned property that French and Braun's real estate taxes are going to support when he's only paying $2,500 rent for that space. He's getting three parking spaces. You're taking up three parking spaces down there. There's no question about that. I don't care what Jeremy says. You go down and look at it. That's what it's taking up. The storage, the, the, Jeremy, the storage building that he's got behind the hot dog stand is bigger than the hot dog stand. And it never had anything like that before. So it, don't tell me he's in compliance. Uh, let's, let's go back to the core. Did you want to make, a, you, you've heard, you know, did you want to make, you had your hand up yes. earlier. I actually have pictures of the hot dog stand set up uh, by the previous owner, and then I have pictures of it set up today. Um, and if you can look at the parking lines in the parking lot, um, if they haven't changed over the past couple years, you can actually tell that I am in the same footprint. Um, mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. show you those pictures if you want them. No, I, I, I trust you. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, we're, we're off topic here, I believe. Um, 
Yeah. I, well, Jeremy, I, I'm going to object to you saying uh, a comment, um, it, you know, something about what Jason was trying to say. I mean, wh where you stand on this is very clear, but, but you know, speak, I would suggest, you know, you speak for yourself, not for someone else. Um, I, I want to reiterate the point here that the town owns this property. This is different than any other properties that we've been comparing it to. Um, and in that regard, you know, we, as the select board for Camden, have this opportunity and this, this duty to decide what it is that we want to mm -hmm. promote yeah, and have on town property. Right. That's, and that, that's why that's I don't think this is a good idea. That's why it's on the agenda. Don't we have, what, don't we, what, don't we have alcohol at the snowball? We have alcohol snowball, yes. We do. Well, there's a precedent set. Yes, yeah. Right. yeah, we do. Town property with town alcohol, property. yes. We have Absolutely. alcohol to snowball. Absolutely. We had a lengthy Jesus. conversation about it, you know, yeah. and some of us didn't. And some people were very against the alcohol. And Sophie, that's the only, he's the only vendor at the snowball. That's correct. And he's also, not competing with any downtown merchants. Right. There's a huge exactly. difference between it being at the huge. snowball and being the only person out there selling it yeah. and saying to French and Braun, well, you don't have to go up the hill anymore to buy your alcohol to go on the day sailor at French and Bronx, and now you can buy it here at the hot dog stand. So to me, that's a huge difference. You've thrown a comp competition in who's not paying a fair market value for the rent, and you're letting him have a, he needs to, now he needs to have a bigger storage area. No, but that's, that's off topic. That's not off topic. No, all right, now, I'm not they're talking about this here. being in compliance please, with the existing Please finish, Stuart, not. we have to move on. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to have a, a raging debate about yes. uh, Alicia. But, uh, but Padre, to the extent of the agreement, it's, it's a five-year agreement. And as you said, it goes to 27, I believe. Um, if, if, is, is it an option to, uh, if, if the board wanted to, to do a one-year only trial of this, of this, of this um, piece of it? Absolutely. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that for the board, because oftentimes uh, some of these things, they, they get... I get confused, honestly. I'm the same place you are, Alice, and I get mixed emotions about it because I don't want... I believe that, that when the decision was made to allow for the um, sale of alcohol at the Snow Bowl, it was done on a trial basis. That's correct. That's, what I, that's, that's, right. that's why I mentioned it. I presume that was an option if the board wants to consider it or not. But other comments? I'd like to get to a point where I can say yes, the competition aspect of it doesn't um, bother me, I suppose is the way you could say it, but what it's the competition for town space that I'm having trouble justifying because we get proposals all the time. It took like a year to get on the agenda this proposal for, for C, a nonprofit organization to do what they wanted to do. Um, you know, for the same reason, I wasn't ready to say yes to the to um, Mark's lobster shack proposal. Mm -hmm. It isn't, we don't have a, a, a fair way of allocating town space. We haven't even, I think that as a select board, we need to look at what the boundaries of that town property are. We need to look at the agreement that we have with the Chamber of Commerce, with the private parking that's behind those buildings. And we need to be looking at, okay, where is the space that's available for commercial entities and what's the process that we're going to go through? I've been able to, I, I love Harbor Dogs. I want you to be open more. I go there with my kids. I also get approached all the time from people that question its fairness and the way that I, the fact that it's, that it's there at all. And the way that I mm. am able to justify that at this point is I say that it's something that is popular with the community and it's been there like that for a very long time. And sometimes if you just throw everything open to an RFP all the time, you end up with things that are, you know, might be unexpected. And something that's working, I didn't seem like it should be messed with too much. But when that starts to expand, it's harder for me to justify that argument of, well, we know that this model works. So I might get to a point where I can say yes, but I, it's not today. I, I think, please understand that, you know, we have wrestled too long with the landing in that area for, you know, you mentioned lobsters and selling lobsters and uh, a popcorn stand. On, all great ideas, by the way, but we, it's, it's collectively, I think, I take part of the blame for not being able to define better what's allowed down there and not. And so that, that's 
Oh, the only heartburn I have, I have no problem with the idea of, especially years, trying to sell through your operation. It's, 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 it's being consistent with to the public and, and, and to the people we've said no to. And they and 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 it's that that's what complicates it in my mind. That's the only. It's a very subtle difference in my <laughs> mind. I'm not concerned. I don't. I don't believe that a town should get involved in discussing uh, competition amongst suppliers. Um, sorry, if you want to compete, reduce your price. If you want to compete, make something <laughs> more affordable. That's what you, everybody does in business. But I think the issue of you know, what what's been the history of this this in prior boards um, uh, on matters at the landing <coughs> has clearly shunned everything in, in terms of these potential uses, uh, you know, for the popcorn stand, for the, for the lobster thing, and other people who would like to do the same thing. So, you know, increasing uh, the business of harbor dogs at this point, <laughs> it's, it's, that, that's the only challenge I have in my mind. That's the only, that's the only challenge. And <coughs> right now, um, Due to restrictions that have been placed upon me that are beyond my control, I am trying to make up for lost revenue that mm. I am seeing. Mm. Um, I'm seeing a dramatic drop in revenue, uh, in especially towards the tail end of last year and now this year. Um, just a huge drop in revenue, and I'm just really trying to figure out how to compensate f because I'm just not seeing the same amount of foot traffic coming through the harbor as there once was. It's a volume question? It, volume of people question? I, I just, just trying to figure out, just trying to be ingenuitive here and I just see. trying to figure out how I can take a margin dense product ah. and fit it into my business model the formula yes okay. Maybe t -shirts. Oh. they free parking? are free parking? not a margin dense <laughs> no, no, <we> didn't. <laughs> anyway board we have to move on this matter do I have a motion from the board I'll make a motion that well my motion will be that we do not accept the request to extend the retail liquor license as part of the licensee um, it's just it's just so uh, Stephanie it, it's just a mod we do not don't, don't modify the agreement the agreement for mm -hmm. the liquor license and there's no there's, there's no license involved we, so it's just, we, we just yeah, it's just well, uh, you're rejecting be, the change to we, the agreement period okay yeah. we would be adding it into the agreement so I was just saying that Correct. we are not Correct. going to be adding it into the agreement perfect Second. Made the second for further discussion. All those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I get myself confused about that. Opposed? I am opposed. Okay. I, I'm like virulently opposed. Four actually. to one. Four to one. Sorry. I, I suspect you keep it on the table. Don't let it die. Um, Try again next year. Well, I, yeah. Well, I think the, I, I, I hope, and beyond my tenure with the board, will consider and it has to consider what the, what the landing is about and how, and how to make it more. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to have an open discussion with you guys yep. and figure out a way to make this happen. Yep. Um, I mean, I'm down with working with the town. Um, I've enjoyed working with you guys in previous ventures. Yep. Um, I think we have yep. all come to great agreements, and I yep. think we can definitely figure out something that'll work. If it's just not even, if I where I just uh, make my retail sales directly to yeah. the boats or have like pre-orders or something right. where it's because okay. I can't because with the way it would be set up it wouldn't even be out in the parking lot because the laws would have to be keeping everything just create a new LLC that they can hire you to go to Hannaford to pick up something and then the revenue and the profits are all in your pocket yeah, there's a <laughs> there's logistics to that, that there is there is lots of them yeah. anyway um, uh, when one door closes another one opens so you know it, it just, I just I'm trying to underscore that's where we are right now I completely understand and I figure I can only try and you guys can only say yes or no okay so next year I will be trying again and uh, see what happens then thank you look forward to seeing you at the landing all right so yes thank you um, thank you Jason um, with that I want to move on to the uh, appointment of if I get this right, of Conservation Commission members. It's it's just one position, is that correct? Two. Two, excuse me. 
and we have a number of people who have applied. Um, so, so this was really just a, this was a request from the Conservation Commission uh -huh. to correct an error, really. Oh. Um, David Kibbe, who which um, we actually didn't realize this until we saw it in the town report here, um, and we believe that it had been voted on and changed. Um, David Kibbe uh, came to maybe a, a meeting and, and said it wasn't going to work for him. Um, and since then, Brian Lightbody has been um, participating as a member. We don't in, generally in, in have his to. his stead? Yes. Um, and it, it's, I believe that we had already voted on it. It appears that that hasn't happened. We could go through and try to appoint a second member right now. Um, I don't think, I think that we should leave that spot open. Um, there's. Would you be running one short on the, on the commission? Well, Brian Robinson um, has, is still, he feels that he doesn't quite have enough time, cool. but that um, he does still participate a little bit. It's not a crisis if the Conservation Commission is one short. Um, other people come to the meetings who are not members. Um, Samantha Scharf, um, waiting to hear back from her uh, as to whether this meeting time would work for her. She's a great oh, um, oh. candidate, so to speak, but um, we just reached out to her <laughs> after asking that this be on the agenda so that we could correct the David Kibbe error. It was discovered that there's an additional vacancy and so that's why it got put on we, like this. And with all of those in the packet, we've reached out to Samantha to see if this is something that will work for her now that she, that, that there's it, Zoom it, participation also. This is, a, I don't know if you want to hear all of this stuff. No, I guess my question is, um, we had one resignation. What was in the we packet. had one resignation, correct? Yeah. yeah. We had one resignation. I don't think we should fill two spots right now because oh. there's going to be a new select board and right. Ray is one of the people up for consideration, for example. Um, if I don't get on, I might want to be on the Conservation Commission. Um, anyway, I just think right now the, the Conservation Commission hasn't had a chance to discuss this. They just wanted to correct the error of the David Kibbe versus Brian Lightbody situation. I see. I see. Um, you want to put a second person on there too right now. So would we be just approving Brian Lightbody formally because he hasn't been formally approved yet? Is that? Sounds like, sounds like David, David Kitty. Yeah. Um, waiting for a definite yes from Samantha Scharf, who I would then recommend um, it, I, cause she has been the longest waiting member on there. Are you recommending we table this? I'm recommending we approve Byron Lightbody today and we table the, the second committee appointment until after the election. All right. Board. I second. I didn't Is hear. That a motion? No, she didn't, but it's just kind I of. I move that we <laughs> ap approve Brian Lightbody to take the place of David Kibbe on the Conservation Commission and that we table the second appointment until after the election. Second. Discussion, board. All in favor? I see five hands. Thank you, five zero. Thank you very much. Um, on to our item F, which is uh, well, whatever number it is, the personnel, uh, the personnel policy amendment regarding paid parental leave. Audra. Yes. So, um, in your memo, I sort of laid this out. Um, we're having a um, HR of Maine Consulting do a comprehensive review of the personnel policy. However, uh, that wasn't ready for me to bring to you to this meeting and I'm really motivated to get the paid parental leave um, provision amended in the personnel policy. Um, for, we, have, we have an employee who will be utilizing that pretty soon. <laughs> So that's, that's why I'm bringing that to you ahead of uh, the entire um, personnel policy recommended um, revision. Um, so what, what it would uh, allow for is six weeks of paid um, parental leave. So anyone can take 12 weeks that's protected under the Family Medical Leave Act, but this would offer six of those being paid. 12 weeks for um, is it maternal leave only? 
No, parentally. 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 Come on, Bob. I was trying to duck it, you know. Welcome to 2024. Well, Cal California is a lot more. But anyway, it's. Yeah, this it's, is a starting place. And, got it. you know, this is something that. Um, Still below international standards. Yeah. Yep. And this is, yeah, this is something that it's it's currently in front of the state yeah, legislature. Yeah, yeah right. For, uh, they're calling it family leave mm -hmm. on the state level. That's what I thought so it was. It's very likely that this is something that, um, you know, we're going to be having a discussion about in the future. Uh, however, it's it's pretty commonplace now for most municipalities to offer 12. some portion of paid parental leave, and we currently do not. What's the? Uh, we don't. Yeah, we don't even have that very antiquated maternity leave. Right. That's, that's right. I was confusing with maternity leave. <laughs> they use. We used to dealing with that. Correct. FMLA. Yes. Yeah. Yep. We have a short-term disability policy mm -hmm. that we use here. We every it all kind of just falls under FMLA right now. Yep. So right now. It's just there's just nothing paid. Just being allowed to use. Sick time. You just yeah, you use your existing leave. What are other towns using in terms of the, the portion that's paid? Six. Pretty common. Yes. So if you have a, right now, if you're having to use existing time, that's like if you get if you have a baby, you better not get sick. Kind of a situation. Yeah. You take your vacation, your vacation, your, days, yeah. your paid time yeah. off, your yeah. everything yeah. to to make up for that. So I do have a few things to say on this. Please. So I am not opposed to having this push through. I would like to um, table it until we do get the full HR report um, for a few reasons, because there is the LD in the state legislature. Yep. I haven't read that. It's like a 400 and something page <laughs> document. I actually do read those things. I just haven't had a chance to. So they may actually be offering more that we could do and should do. And I'd rather make a one-time change on this instead of keep making um, changes throughout. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to wait for the HR report because I know that there's going to be, I know there's going to be things that are going to be changed. Mm -hmm. And piecemealing it, I just... I would, I would like to do a more comprehensive change. If um, the employee right now need, ends up going into labor and needing this, we can always um, backdate it, whatever that word is. It just went out of my head. Retroactive. Retroactive that and make it so that it works. Yeah. If that is what the board decides but i also think that it's probably something that should probably wait till the next board comes in because it's a pretty significant change and we already have had pretty significant um, pay scales and it's just everybody is in such an uproar right now i'd rather have the hr report i know it's going to be in there absolutely it's it's going to be in there. I'd like to see it. And I would just like to table it for now and then pass it when we have a little bit more meat on the bones. When is that HR report scheduled? Do you have any ideas? We're talking weeks and months? It, July. Oh, it's close. It's close. The memo says June 16th. She'll be done with her report. Yeah, she'll be the she'll be done with her review. Oh, oh I it yeah, takes I, time to pass read on, it through. Read on, yeah. But okay. yeah. Even if it's July or August, then it might make sense to make it wait a little while. Is there any reason why we couldn't have it at our next meeting? Well, I, I, give it a little more time. More time than that. Yeah. She'll be done with her review. Yeah. It takes time to write a report. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, she's, she'll have written everything but by then, will. but there are, there are just other things that need to be done. Yeah, it, it, it seems wise to me to move it off to the new board. It, it, these are these are long-reaching decisions, and uh, I don't feel comfortable putting it in now. And I mean, it's going to be in the HR report. Oh, no question it's, about it's it. It's going to be. There's no I question about it. I can't imagine that anybody's going to sit here oh, and no, no, say no. No, it's. I'm going to tell you now. It's the same. She literally pulled out the section because I asked her to, yeah. because I really wanted to cover cover an employee who's going to be going out on parental leave. Wow. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it does feel like we are a small town, and sometimes. The idea is looking at our personnel policy so that we can be competitive and fair. And so if you're asking about a specific employee, 
it makes more sense now to hear to because I, I too was sort of looking at this wondering okay we're going to get this great report about our personnel policy and what we should be doing but we're going to make this w one change before we get that report struck me as odd and i was prepared to say that yeah let's just table this until we can get some expert advice are there any mechanisms for without getting too no personal for re making no. something retroactive i don't have anything other than re like a hoping I, right. yeah but what she just asked is right we could retroactive it if she goes out tomorrow however everybody has had to you operate can. in this fiscal year under the old policy the new fiscal year starts sure i had a baby in this oh, right, fiscal year right. under yeah. the old policy that's what yeah. i'm saying yeah so it's Oops. not <laughs> it's not changing anything to the detriment it as of right now i understand this one employee however there has been multiple people that have had to operate under the old policy i'm saying it's going to take less probably four weeks to be able to get it if at that point the new board wants to retroactive it i think that. at that time would be the best time to make they, that they, decision they definitely it would take the time no matter what it would just be a question of whether it was, a, paid. was paid or not that makes sense to me yeah even if it's later than the first of july if it's mid-july or early august you'll be okay to retroactive it i think Mm -hmm. Any disagreement with that? I really support adding it into the policy. Me too. I also know that it's not, this is well beyond my scope of expertise. I'm not, you know, what's, what's normal and all of that, so. This is very normal in the nation. It's, um, I think Maine's a little slow getting at it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that Stephanie's idea of retroactivity makes a lot of sense. Make sure we cover anybody that gets caught in the crossfire. Is six weeks the most typical thing, or is it, be Two, six four. paid, six paid. Six is six is average. And you can change it, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen anything. I've I've looked at other policies around and I haven't seen anything less than six. Right. Oh really? Right. Yeah. So just so you all know, uh, HR main consulting, it's they only do municipalities. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got them to review our policy. So mm -hmm. nothing that's being that will be proposed in the review is outside of what is typical of a municipality. And you expect that in July? I think it'll be ready to come before the board in July oh, at the cool. soonest. Wow. Could the could the, could the consultant just pull that part out of it that's, and say that's what I am giving you? Did. That's what she did. That's what she did. The that's what consultant the, actually wrote that. Yes. Sorry, I missed yes. I missed that, that part. That, that's what Audra explained. She she just that. I understand yeah. that Audra explained that. I just. Missed Miss the actual wording from the consultant saying that we should act on this separately. Um, I think the only difference is the retroactivity thing so we can cover somebody if we, if the board will, future board will look at that uh, in July uh, for consideration, I think is wise. It, there's not much, um, there's, no, there's no doubt it's going to be, this is what it's going to be. I move that we table this until our first July select board meeting. Make a second. I, I, if you, you want to specify a date, it's up to you. But I would just no, make it. No, please don't. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't. Ma make it um, uh, a um, proposed date certain in, Ju in July. I move that we table this till a, to a proposed date in July to right. be determined. Perfect. Second. <laughs> Motion made. The second. The discussion. All in favor? Five zero. Thank you very much. I, by the way, I, I want to go back to an item I ran right over because my I mean, notes are a mess. And that's the approval of a revocable license with Reeves for paving of a driveway on Central Street. It's fine. Yes. So um, you're all familiar with revocable license agreements um, oh, yeah. for doing work in the right of way at this point. So this is a, um, a property that's currently, or not currently, it's a property on Main Street, and what they're proposing is they have a gravel um, entrance on Central Street to the Main Street property, and they would like to um, just pave that area that's currently gravel, and this is just giving them permission to do that because it's mm -hmm. in the right of way. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that I, when I was reading this, I was very confused about why um, 
the um, oh my goodness the Camden Farmers Market would would want to park way up there oh I think that was used as a template and it was okay. yeah. <laughs> it's like, that is a really interesting you know what's really funny Janice it, but... and I caught that and we, Still, the version in your packet has the farmer's market in it. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I get confused I like, by that, why? too. Oh, my gosh. Oh. I tell you. It's really great. I'm not opposed to letting the farmer's market park Jeez. there. But it just seemed like a really long way to carry your tomatoes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, comments, board? Saying. Yeah. I make a motion that we approve the paving as submitted. Second. Motion made and seconded for further discussion. All those in favor? 5 0. Thank you. No, no, I oppose. I oh, don't wait, want I, to see more pavement. I okay, like gravel. Okay, four, I'm, I, correct, I stand corrected. Four to one. Thank you. Um, the last action item we have is the authorization to pay the balance of the lease purchase agreement for Knox Mill and Knox Knowlton Street parking lots. Background, Audra? Yes, so in December of uh, 2018, the uh, town had a special town meeting to authorize um, entering into a lease with an option to purchase agreement for um, the Knox Mill parking lot and the Knowlton Street uh, lot, which is currently the skate park. And um, what was approved by voters stipulated that the purchase price payments um, would be $5,000 over a month for 174 consecutive payments. So absolutely have the option of buying it out early <coughs> and I'm advising you to do so because um, you know we just had a situation where that property changed hands mm -hmm. and there was some difficulty with the transfer of that agreement. You know, this is a 15 year period. People forget things. We have the funds to do this because the value of the TIF district has increased and is generating quite a bit of revenue. So, you know, we have the ability to pay out the balance of that agreement. So I, I'm recommending that you do so and we'll own it outright. And, you know, we can all sort of move forward with subdividing the, um, the mill parking lot from the right. bigger lot and any plans that we have for it. And so we're how many years into this and what's the balance to pay? So um, the current balance on the agreement is five hundred sixty thousand dollars. So we um, we made. I'm sorry, Jody sent this all to me. We've made um, four years worth of payments. That's what I thought. Yeah, Audrey, what is the significant benefit of paying this off early? Uh, as I read it, it's eight hundred eight hundred and seventy thousand dollars, whether we buy it now or whether we buy it in ten years. And I'm assuming the dollar value dollar is going to be worth more now than it is in 10 and a half years. So what's the significant benefit of buying it now? I would say that it is really easy for people to forget that these are agree agreements are in place, especially if property changes hands. Like if we don't have, if it's not the same owner that it currently is, like I just went through quite a thing when that property was sold. Changed, it was sold. And I don't want to go through it again. I don't want anyone sitting in any of these seats to forget about it and for that to come and go so i just think that having it behind us so that we don't put our we don't put the town in that position is a wise thing to do well, why this and not firming up the legality of the agreement or is the agreement it, the first question i guess is is the agreement on shaky legal no, it's, footing it's recorded in the registry of deeds it's mm. it's fine um it's it's more about we've got a situation now where we can do this. Everybody understands it. Everybody's in agreement on it. We're not setting up anybody in the future for litigation with an agreement, which it just happens all the it's time. Beca everyone's becoming more and more litigious. So yep. I feel like when everyone's in good standing now, getting this behind us, owning it free and clear is just a smart thing for us to do. Well, that's moving with the presumption that we want to own it, of course. Well, people um, voted that they did. Yeah. They didn't vote to own it, did yes, they? They did. Yeah. Lease, to, lease purchase. Yeah, lease purchase. And the whole discussion at that point was because was the wisdom of that whole lease purchase thing in some ways, because what we were doing was like owner financing. Right, um, we couldn't which buy Which is a little it sketchy. Right. And so it was explaining, it was because of the revenue in the TIF district yep. that that 
owner financing situation made sense. And I remember right. we had, there, you know, there was a special town meeting and people voted on that and a few other things. It is a purchase stone. So we, do need, so, we own it after 14 and a half years yes. regardless yes. of what we decide. You, you yeah, finish so paying the lease and you own it. Okay. Yeah. And we've already paid four years worth. I, I like that deal better than paying the cash now. Okay. When it's the same amount of cash. I strongly caution against waiting. Yeah, I, I, I would it agree. Was, I would agree. Yeah. I was very uncomfortable with the way that the transfer of that property happened, and yeah. I do not want to put the town in that position again. Yeah. It was, uh, I was more engaged in it than maybe some of you, because being here a lot, it was extremely difficult, heading for potentially litigation. It was, it was that extreme. But, um, because luckily, the new owner wanted to. Be because of the long story, but... Um, if it doesn't hurt us financially to do so when we have enough funds to do it, I, I, I think it'd be crazy to go on with another. You're right about uh, over a ten, 10 years, the present value of money is different depending on the escalation rate, of course. But um, this situation, you can, you can suck that up very quickly with, with uh, if another situation should occur with signed agreements. But other it, comments? Well, let me, let me it just does take, hurt us financially. Other comments, so I'm going to come back sure. to you. What's, what's the balance of the TIF F fund? Oh, so the, the current balance of that fund is um, $461,000, 367. The revenue will be around 550000 this year, and we've committed to using about 320000 So we have, we have plenty of money to pay the balance of. So you have a net $700,000, almost three quarters of a million net after the commitments and the income. So this would suck up about two thirds of that. I mean, but that this is that's kind of a moot point. We can use that TIF money for other things. Uh -huh. That we should be rather than saying that we have. I think we'd be putting everyone in the future in a potentially risky situation not to pay it off. Mm. After after what we went through just recently, I really mm. strongly advise that you just pay it off and we move forward. Other comments, board members. I just didn't see this as a very controversial thing before when we talked about doing it. It's not an idea I cooked up, but it seemed to be the result of a lot of town planning in the past, and it made sense to do it. And I do agree that having to re-talk about it as a lease status is complicated, but I don't, the finance part of it, I'm not going to pretend that I'm a guru. Mm -hmm. I think in in my what people have been talking to me about has just been the finance part of this. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to benefit the person that owns the lot greatly to get that huge sum of money um, handed to them now instead of over the span of 10 years. Um, that is a huge benefit to them. That is people's concerns. I'm not 100% sure um, why that is a concern, but mm -hmm. just throwing that out there. Uh -huh. um, and the TIF funds, there's multiple things that are in the agreement that it can be spent for. Mm -hmm. So they are worried that should we need to spend a yep. TIF fund on those things, the funding may not be there because we've rushed forward and mm -hmm. paid off this parking lot. Okay. So that's kind of where I'm just kind of, it sounds like a really great deal and a, and, and a great I idea to do. Mm -hmm. I am worried what other things um, could we come up? I mean, we're pretty, um, I mean, people say, well, we're at Camden, we can afford whatever we want, but in the end, is that true? If something well, was to happen and we needed to use the TIF funds? I would say that nobody ever counted on us having as much revenue in the TIF, or the, it being as lucrative as it is now. You know, when I first started, it made no money almost. It was, we're talking like less than tens of thousands of dollars a year. And then we did the 2017 reval and it went from generating a few tens of thousands to I think it was like $145,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And we were all very excited by that. And we were, we were able to enter into this you know, lease purchase agreement to eventually own these parking lots. And you know, we were all um, sort of carrying on with that 
TIF district generating about that much, and it was after the reval that was done 2021 20, mm -hmm. that it started to generate mm -hmm. over you know half a million a year. Yeah. So I I don't think any you know yes there were things that were outlined that money could have been spent on from the TIF district, but nobody ever anticipated that it would generate the revenue that it does today. We've committed to doing this. The voters voted on it and approved it. They approved a lease purchase agreement because that's what we could afford to do at the time. time over time instead of bonding it out. You know, it was a better solution because yep. we could use TIF funds. I'm telling you that it was a bad situation for the town to be in where people can forget about these things. And I think it's been surprising how many things have been forgotten over the years. Mm -hmm. So I would not like to put the, I'm trying to do the responsible thing for the town by settling this now and paying it so that nobody in the future is in a position where this is forgotten and trouble. Sir. Somebody tries to sell the property and, yes. and, and pretend to the potential buyer that the that the parking lot comes with it and that's i yeah, yeah. i just and that that we have we've an opportunity yeah. we've got the funds available to and future proof ourselves and do it now and move forward with a bunch of things that i don't really feel comfortable doing when we're not the owner outright right. like i wouldn't spend a, i wouldn't recommend to anyone to spend money significant money paving that lot when we don't own it. Mm -hmm. And it's at a point now where it's kind of close to needing to be resurfaced. So. I, I, I can see you have a strong, you feel strongly about it, Audrey. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. I'm, I'm just a little, you know, the precedent here is we're worried about um, litigious actions. Yeah. Um, but we can, we can expand that to any number of agreements that the town's in, in under, in my opinion. Um, we see an opportunity to to, um, or, or we know that there's one particular owner who doesn't like this agreement anywhere here or there. And, you know, are, are we going to let them twist our arms into paying them, you know, almost a half a million dollars now rather than over the course of 10 years just because they don't like that agreement and we're a little bit fearful of where they could go there's with no it. no arm twisting going on. No, I'm, they're, they're I am doing this because I, th I think it's the most responsible thing to do given past experiences given where we're at with the lot and the condition that it's in and the investment that we need to think of making in it. So it's not because I feel like our arms are being twisted. I feel like we're being proactive. Sure. They're not asking us to pay the balance. I understand. So, and you brought up another point, that the paving of the lot. Is that incumbent upon the town or yes. typically the... the yes. It's a the, lease purchase agreement. So it's different. Responsible for all maintenance rather than yeah. a tri typical, triple typical. Net. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I just don't think that fear should drive this decision. I, and, I, and that's what that's the feeling that I'm getting right now. Allison. Okay. One, one thing to the other, I think that also if we were to own it, and I'm, if the town were to ever want to do something different with those properties, or so the whole point is, has been parking, is to try to solve the town's parking problems as part of this, the comprehensive plan and all kinds of things. Um, if there were to be a time, for example, when one of these other parking lots became available and the townspeople wanted to vote to say, we, we would like to own the parking lot across from the Jack, for instance, or something like that, instead of this Knox Mill parking lot, mm -hmm. um, that would be, if we owned it, then we have the ability, I, it seems like, just like there's more flexibility. I'm not saying that is going to happen, but if the needs of the town change, then owning that real estate gives us the flexibility, mm -hmm. I would think, for people mm -hmm. to be able mm -hmm. to make a different choice. If Other comments? No, and I think, I, I mean, the way I see it, the TIF is going to continue on producing the same level of money. So there's, there's not a revenue issue here. Uh, it's not, we're not, we're not trying to spend a one-shot deal amount that we have. We'll have this amount again next year. So the way I look at it is paying off this property is actually freeing up more TIF money in the future for bigger projects, not putting us in the situation where we have to do a lease purchase agreement because we don't have enough cash on hand to do those projects. So I, I think it's a, 
It, it is not a financially risky proposal. And can I tell it you gives, all the truth? I don't even need to ask your permission no, to No, you do can this. do it without us, right? It's a big sum of money, so I feel true. like it's important it's that true. the select board weighs in on this, de this decision, because the true. townspeople have given... Also grant funding. I think in order to use any grant funding for any parking lots, yeah. if there was a project, we would have to be the owner for, in some situations. So. So. I'm going to make a, a motion that we approve the recommendation from the town manager that we purchase the balance of the lease purchase agreement for the uh, Knowlton Street parking lot and the balance is $560,000 uh, paid from the downtown TIF. Our second, are we going to take comments, sir? Yeah, sure. One second. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Calm down. Sit down. <laughs> Smile. Have a drink. No, I'm just kidding, Stuart. One second. Um, one of your motion made and seconded. Are there any other comments from the board? And I will take some public comment next, Stuart. Let the Stuart talk first. I, has it been seconded? Okay, yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. It has oh, been. Yeah. Okay, oh, sorry. Yeah. It was oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was. Oh, yeah. Stuart. I, want it. I, uh, I fully support what Audra is saying, and I think it's a good idea. Um, I would suggest you go into a. Um, executive, session. executive session and discuss what offer you might make to close this deal out to this person or the current owners. If I was negotiating to do this and they wanted to give them a lump sum today, it would probably would not be the full amount. Good suggestions and, and at today's too. interest rates, they might like to get paid a little bit less. Uh, Good point. Good point, Stuart. Thank you. I'll modify my motion accordingly. Um, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, Greg. Just a question. Uh, yes, uh, Audra, what is the amount of money that pours back into the TIF that we inspect for next year? 550000 550000 will be back in there about this time next year then. No. Oh. July, we're going to get 550000 550000 right, back yeah. in. That's right. So oh. whatever, I mean, yep. fine. Yep. So that when I look at the downtown TIF district and everything, the things that the money could be used for, there will be money in there for be used for more than just this parking lot in the future. Yes. Correct? Thanks. Correct. So I'm going to modify my motion that the select board auth authorizes uh, the town manager to liquidate the, to pay the balance of... Not to exceed. Yes, not to exceed $560,000 funded by the downtown TIF fund we work? don't want to no uh, as no. a maximum but that she can negotiate the no, balance no. yeah you give, her the, give, you give her another give her some new way oh i just thought the executive session thing was an interesting idea well, it have I... to be have to be the next month mm. you have to announce the executive session you just can't do one okay can we mr process you, over here you want oh, to sit. Sit. <laughs> can, we, can somebody second this motion so we can move on you, this topic uh, allison do you approve that or not I'll be honest, I wasn't listening carefully oh, enough. Okay. Maybe somebody else could. Repeat it, please. That's okay. I make a motion that you. we authorize the town manager to negotiate the balance of the lease purchase agreement for the Knowlton Street parking lot up to $560,000 financed by the TIF fund, okay. not to exceed $560,000. Kind of defeat the purpose. Do you, do you approve that second? It just feels a little like like it's a purpose defeating um, motion when we authorize up to the total um, yeah. amount. It's but just, it's, I it's, this is it, not. I would rather the rest of you decide honestly, and I'm I'm supportive of the goal. So do you support? Yes, the I support the. Sec I'm okay. seconding. Right. I will. I will continue. A motion my made and seconded. <laughs> further discussion, board. I I will say that that's a very difficult negotiation position to be in. <laughs> <laughs> but good luck. Ray, quickly. Just one quick little thing. Sure. I believe Sophie just said the Knowlton Street one. It's got to be two parking lots, right? Oh, uh, they are both on Knowlton Street. I think Street. in the motion yeah. you have to say Street. both. Yeah, thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. I have a motion made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? All right. Um, four, one. Stephanie, I missed your hand. I'm she, sorry. She, she okay, so it's 4 1 approval. And that will end our action items for the evening, and we'll move on to the management reports. All right. So we kind of talked about this a little, but I thought it would be good to show everyone. What's going on up there? Why is Zoom fritzing? Because I'm fritzing it. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. So, so I'm not technically savvy. If you go onto the town's website yeah. and you go under, oh, I'm right there. <laughs> if you go under the um, Magunta Cook River updates. Yeah. So in this area, and I'm going to try to figure out a better way to, to um, show Navi this. Navigate. If you're interested in the, what we talked about with the lake levels and the tool that um, Dave St. Laurent yep. found and has started to enter the daily log book in. We have a good enough internet connection to show you. I think it's awfully, it's nice. It, the bullets are coming up now. There's only one bullet, but at least you can show what it is. Yes, so this is um, daily that dam is checked and entered in this website. So, yep, it was, oh wait, that's. You got it. It's frustrating more. because of the European. Um, yeah. yeah oh. The date is yeah. the first, the oh. number, yeah. the day, right. and then. Right. But it has an electronic. Yeah, right. Time stamp, which yes. is. Yes, in the other yes. view, yes. I don't worry, I figured it out. I'm just saying yeah. there's one view where I was looking at it with the kids and they were like, what is going on? Wrong. I'm having a hard time What's finding What's the it? 17th anyway. month of the, it's, it's um, not that complicated, but it's just a little different. When you're working with kids that have learned how to write the date, right. they haven't been That's exposed. My kids aren't worldly maybe, enough. Maybe next year we'll, we'll, we'll get you convinced to use a metric instead of imperial. Yeah, right. I would hope That's so. part of a whole town of Camden transition That's plan to the metric. <laughs> not going to Anyway, what, what game are we looking at, Audra? But anyway. So um, if, Anybody who's interested in daily updates and pictures of water levels on uh, Lake McGonagook at the um, east and west dams, as well as downstream, downstream to Seabright. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing is that Montgomery Seabright Dam doesn't well. even get monitored behind it, which I never realized. They only there's only, there isn't a numeric gauge right. behind the dam. It's only downstream. Right. Yeah. Which is interesting too, but I mean, it's kind of crazy that we don't measure the amount above or below the spillway at Seabright. I think. Mm, you just need to make a motion for ten thousand more dollars, and you got it. I think yeah. actually, no, that's part of the. It's part of the. Yeah, all over. It's part of it. Yeah. We, we did that already. You did. Well, we can just go off of what all everybody done. remembers from the last twenty years. So Audrey, got three dams covered on this. Three, uh, well, four, but yes, three locations. Right. So, three locations. Yeah. So that, that's one of the updates. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't have a good way of showing this, but MDOT sent an update about the Route 1 project. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So. Route 1 North. Yeah. Yep. That's why the trees are all marked. So I wish I had a better way of um, showing this because it sort of came. The, the, we can describe it pretty easily. Yeah, let's just tell us. I mean, it's not it's not very exciting. There's, I think they're sending it out to everyone, um, right. but they sent it to us to have a preview first. So right. uh, it's just an, an update that they're going to begin the project, um, and they're saying later this year they haven't really been more specific about that and that it's scheduled to be finished by the end of summer of 2026. And they've, they've sort of bullet pointed everything. So rehabilitating and reconstruction of 1.5 miles of Route 1 between the State Park entrance and the Lincolnville Town Line. Tree clearing to improve safety and visibility, replacing the Great Brook Bridge, replacing the Spring Brook Bridge. So that's sort of the scope of the project. And, um, you know, it, don't be surprised if, if you see MDOT doing the initial sort of surveying and... Um, Which they've started. Yeah, marking marking work mm -hmm. so they've so it went out to bid and they've awarded no no they're doing it in sections in chunks because they're having a problem with budget so then I believe they're going to bid the two bridges Great Brook uh, by the Lincolnville line and um, and and uh, Spring, Spring Brook in this year bid it as as a, as a separate project and then next year, about the same time, they will bid the widening of the 1.5 miles. And so my other update, so with the uh, Pearl Street project, mm. when, um, so the connection into the, the manhole from the Oak Street um, yeah. pipe, so where it, it yeah. connects into Pearl Street, yeah. there were some um, 
elevation issues, so they need to um, realign part of that pipe as it goes on to Oak Street. So that's been, you know, a, a unforeseen change to the project, oh. as well as um, they ran into some ledge. And yes. so there's notice going out to all the abutters as per our ordinance because they're going to have to blast ledge. It's it's uh, it's granite ledge. Yes. Not necessarily blast. Sometimes it's hammering. No, no. They no, they have with, to send out no. the notice because they actually have well, to they blast. Have to they were hammering, but granite ledge yeah, is not yeah, going to work. It, the hammering is just going to take them too long. So now they're going to be blasting. So you'll probably feel it at your house. That's. I think. Yeah. Notice has gone out Am to I everyone. Am I going to get a notice? Nope. Oh. No, you're not. You're not in. They're not removing enough that you're in the. Matter. In the blast the zone. area. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And granite, granite's a bear to blast. Yeah. So. The elevation situation. Hmm. How much is that going to cost? That is that like a. It, it sounds yeah. like somebody made a mistake. I don't know if it was somebody made. I I'm not exactly sure. I, I don't want to talk about like who's to blame and for like yeah. a mistake or okay, not but, in this but meeting. But it's significant very enough that came to you. Yes. Yeah. And you are telling us. Yes. Is it going to increase the total project cost? We don't know at this point because there you know there are things that are less expensive sometimes. Oh, like maybe they found something that's going to make it less expensive. There there have been some things that have made certain <laughs> oh, parts of it less expensive, but like ledge you know the finding ledge makes it more expensive. It's not surprising, though, up at the top of that, over by the Legion no, Hall. No, I mean, all right, you're right. So we don't, yeah, we're, we'll find out closer yeah. to when more of the project is finished. Okay. So those are Pearl Street updates. Anything else? And those are my big ones. Sounds good to me. Whoa. Oh, there's, there's more work, sorry, there's more work going on with EMS. Um, oh. I don't want to get into too much detail with anyone but Stephanie at this point. Yep. So at okay. some point, I think That's it would fine. be good for us to meet and touch base about she's, all that. She's our liaison, yes. Select board, Tom. Uh, the planning board had a meeting uh, last week. They approved mm -hmm. the Nordhaven subdivision. Oh, oh. oh. Just, yep. just last week? Yep, oh, okay. on Thursday. Um, they have another meeting on the 15th for short-term rentals, if you're interested. Um, and the MIDC meets Thursday at 11. Okay. Which that is, I can, if you want a link, I can get you a link to that meeting as well. Thanks, Tom. Allison? Um, the Historic Resources Committee is going to be um, having a table at um, Election Day to discuss with the community historic preservation ordinances and um, sort of along the same lines of some of the stuff I've discussed before that they're working on, but they um, thought that would be a good opportunity to just talk to the community about ordinances and historic preservation and, um, you know, some of the stuff that's in the comprehensive plan and get, you know, input as to what people are thinking about right now. So um, mm -hmm. they're going to do that. Um, the Pathways Committee is um, working on updating their master plan for both Camden and Rockport. So that's like sidewalk survey stuff and coming up with their recommendations to the town of both Camden and Rockport um, for which sidewalk should be the highest priority um, or connector pathways should be highest priority for either fixing or possibly for um, adding new ones and, and things like that. So anybody that um, has input on that, obviously it's, this is all stuff that would eventually come to the select board, but it's stuff that historically the Pathways Committee has come up with recommendations. Um, and I do think it would be good if it were broadened out a little bit and we try to get a little bit more people involved. Earlier, um, I attended a training workshop on community resilience. We're part of this um, community resilience partnership. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they had people at the SAMA set yesterday from uh, Camden, uh, there are a bunch of towns in Knox County that are part of it, and basically just um, presenters mostly from the state talking about what, you know, what are other towns are doing for sea level rise, high water events, um, all that kind of stuff. So they have put out a guide, Parker Gassett from Maine Sea Grant has been working with a bunch of other agencies to put out this guide basically for best practices for communities. Um, 
They did Courtney drop one off at the town office? There's one, there's currently a paper copy. Um, they're gonna be distributing a digital version, but it's just basically an attempt to um, coalesce all of the different um, grant opportunities in the state, all the different things that the resources in the state for people that have shoreline property, for instance, and it's eroding, and they wanna know, you know, what, you know, what should I do about my eroding shoreline? If I do it in this way, is there a grant? Should I, you know, what ordinances are other municipalities enacting? So it kind of goes along with some of that peer stuff, maybe with sea level rise adaptations, model ordinances. Um, and that um, is it for official town business. Sophie? Um, so the only committee I worked on was the river committee, which was here this afternoon. And we had a presentation from the Save the Dam committee on their per perception and their concerns about the, the dam. I think it was a really good presentation. It was very interesting, lots of information. We're going to have another one of the same format with Restore Meguntico River. And uh, this summer, the, the river advisory committee is also going to be more uh, visible doing some community events, like we had a table, they had a table, because so I wasn't there. They had a table at the farmer's market um, and at the seafair, and basically they're ready to start engaging more with the community and, and have discussions and walk along the, the river and visit the dams and understand all those issues we're talking about, flooding, fishes, fish passages, uh, being good stewards of the river, etc. So that's, that's, that's the only committee I've been working with since the last board meeting. Thank you. Stephanie, Google. Uh, I was just going um, to mention, remind everybody that next Tuesday, week from tonight, is election night. So if you haven't already voted, please vote. A um, number of great candidates running, five of them running for select board, three for school board, and a bunch of warrants. They're grab grabbing a lot of attention in our town. So please, most importantly, exercise your franchise. Um, uh, FYI to Audra's uh, information about MDOT, uh, a lot of us residents along Route 1 North have seen the initial um, uh, surveying that's being done, as well, it's been done now as we speak, and you will we'll notice if you drive that stretch, there are a number of trees that are marked um, with red and blue stickies, and just so everybody understands, those trees that they have marked are all marked for demolition per their construction drawings, which they actually completed a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. So it, it's, it's nothing new mm. effectively, but it is new when you first see them marked. Um, it's different than looking at a plan for most people who can't read plans. But I certainly spent enough time on those plans to recognize that they are. It, it's um, when you widen the road, it's intrusive. Yeah, that was one of the I, biggest things we discussed as a okay, select yeah, board for yeah. A long time. Is there a place for people that want to refresh their memory um, that they can see the plans? Well, MDOT certainly has them online, right. um, but we. Maybe the town could. I don't think we ever put the plans on the town website, did we, Audra? It's a very large MDOT, document, but we could it's link. Huge. It's we huge. We could link to their. It's mm -hmm. huge, and it's well for most people. It's a little difficult to read. Honestly, civil drawings are the worst. You know, yeah, for people. So we could link. That's fine. MDOT you know, does a good job putting can, their. If we can do it. That's fine, but. I wanted to add something about when you sp spoke about voting earlier, um, if I may. Yes, of course. Uh, don't remove signs. Don't what? Don't remove signs. I mean, I've, some people have, have told me that their signs ha had been removed from public spaces. And really? so I'm just encouraging everybody, you know, it's, it's okay to have different opinions, as you can see here. Every other week, we all have very different opinions. Uh, but please do not remove people's signs. Mm -hmm. You're respectful. No. I see one blowing around, you could still you could fix you it could grab also. it and exactly. fix it. Because sometimes it's not on purpose what people are doing. Well, no, I know on, in, uh, on the corner of a mountain and one, uh, they did remove all the signs there because they were replanting the flowers. But to my knowledge, they put them back. No, but they put they them put, back, but, they not put them all of, no, but not, not all of them. No, they did not put them back. I don't know where they are. No, no this, I saw them there today. <laughs> put on the side, and some of us went and we'll put them back. Oh, I thought they had put them this back. This exact thing, no. same thing happened last year when they did the gardening there, so understand that's what caused it. I run Can I truck. ask one question about the signs? <laughs> yes. Is it a state ordinance or a town ordinance that signs should not be placed within 250 feet of the voting state. establishment? State. And we have a problem we need with that. to have people 
go out there and you also can't have your that signs out. closer than they need to be 50 feet apart right so those signs that your sign like it, what your signs need to be 50 feet apart from each other yep. on public on public Ray space. Anderson signs right. needs to be only 50 Ray's feet only yours Ray. another Nolan's Ray Anderson. Anderson. Nolan signs have to be 50 feet apart right. not his from yours what if all the candidates agree that they you see what I'm saying no. it's the law can't so do like sign, sign sign right. sign yeah, sign right. and who's in charge of enforcing that how many violations have we? <laughs> <laughs> My point is, is yeah. that there That's are signs them. that are very close to the public safety building. And you are correct. That should be Must removed. Be. Must be. Well, they will be on election, election day. Yeah, but That's 30 a good days. Point. It's 30 That's days good. before election day. Yeah, it's 30, 30 days, days before election yeah, day. Yeah, I think it is. So we're. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be burned at the stake on election day. Yeah. Yeah. Last reminder, I apologize. Uh, sure. There is a uh, workshop with the planning board June 28th. So if you forgot that, That's true. put it back and on your calendar. We need to work on the agenda for now. Good, mm -hmm. good, good call. Yes, absolutely. Because yeah. we have a few things that need to make to make it to the agenda. Right. Yeah. yeah. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I think I think Bob should second for the last time. Oh hell yeah, I'll second the motion. <laughs> All in favor? All, all's in favor of adjourning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.